friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Um, it's Saturday, and we're here, and I appreciate you. Hello, hello, hello. Yeah, so um, this week, if you tuned in, we had some unscheduled streams on, I guess, Monday and Tuesday, where we were building a an app <laughs> where we could uh, log all of the things that makes makes us happy. Yeah, Saturday stream. Welcome, everyone. Um, I spent a whole one minute styling my mustache, and you can't even see it because my face is covered in hair. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I appreciate you all. Thank you for being here. Uh, this is the GitHub repo of the thing that we're working on. Here it is. Uh, will functional programming be dominant? the dominant paradigm over time? No. It, <laughs> uh, it's, it's had its waves of popularity, so has OOP. There's always room for both. Um, that's my answer to that. <laughs> okay. Um, let me start up the app really quick so I can show you what it does, because I totally didn't do that before the stream, which I totally should have, but that's okay. Um, oh, yeah. It's got a Docker container for the, uh, for the database. And um, the front end is written with Vue. Um, oh. Basically, I need three tabs open because we have the Docker container running the database. Uh, we need to run the API, which is not in a Docker container. Jim McDonald, thank you for that 11-month resub. Very much appreciated. Um, I'll also mention, if anyone uh, resubs or subs today and you do not see the notification on my screen, please let me know because I'm, I'm going to try to debug that today. Um, I have the logs running over here. Whoa! Well, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Uncaught DOM exception that it cannot play. That makes sense. Um, yeah. Oh, well. But uh, if it happens, let me know. Um, okay. Well, we'll start this up. Great. That's listening. Wait. I think this is a TMIJS message. Oof. Things are happening. Okay, now we'll start up the front end. Here we go. <laughs> and good morning, Linzon. We'll say hi to everybody today. It's Saturday. We got time. We got plenty of time. Okay, let's see if it works. It works, mostly. We have things to fix about it. But the idea is, um, in the chat, you can say, happiness is, insert statement here, to describe your happiness or what makes you happy. And uh, it will appear on this website and it will appear in a, in a nice little frame just like this. Um, and that's what we're working on today. So you, as you can see, it, it needs some work. We want to add like some background stuff. You can see that on some of the frames, there isn't enough padding. So it kind of like cuts things off. Um, but uh, yeah, Ad Adam Mate, thank you for that uh, 10 month reset. Hey. Hey, happiness is a foggy morning. Happiness is everything. I agree. And if you watch the movie, Hector and the Search for Happiness, it's kind of the conclusion that they come to. Happiness is everything. Happiness is sadness. Happiness is just living life. Because um, you can't have happiness really without sadness because you wouldn't really have anything to contrast it with, right? Julian, thank you for the bits. <laughs> happiness is compiling on the first try. Happiness is tacos a la pastor. I, you know, I might eat that for lunch because there's plenty of taco places around me. Happiness is making others happy. I agree. Happiness is being on this stream. Happiness is eating potatoes. Um, so right now, um, all of these are in chronological order. So these are the ones that were said last time. But if you go all the way to the end, that was like the, the last one that was said last time. Happiness is still cat cuddles. Um, and right now, you have to do a hard refresh, but then uh, the newer ones appear. Happiness is... Oh, thank you, Nikki Poo. <laughs> happiness is CJ. Happiness is worldwide peace, says one line of me. Happiness is happiness. Happiness is Saturday. Happiness is a sunny day. Happiness is everything. Happiness is a foggy morning. Happiness is being on this stream. Happiness is making others happy. <laughs> happiness is tacos out the store. Happiness, happiness is compiling on the first try. Uh, another thing is we probably need to render emotes. I think I'll add that to my to-do list. Yeah, you potentially do. You could do line breaks. Happiness is random acts of kindness. Yeah, though I'll say this: I went to Starbucks. I I don't personally drink coffee, but I I go to Starbucks every now and then to pick up a coffee for my partner. And this happened where the car in front of me paid for my coffee, 
And it took me by surprise because I don't go to Starbucks that often. Apparently, it's a thing where you pay for the car behind you. But all I want to say is it's 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 nice. It is a nice gesture, um, like paying it forward, I guess. Uh, it's an act of kindness. But you have to think about the the baristas and the people running the cash register because I would think – what do I do now? I don't know, Chad. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like the people running the register. Um, you're not making them happy by doing that because it gets confusing, right? They have to keep track of which car has paid for which car, and like they're not accept potentially not accepting payment from one of the cars. I don't know. I feel like you're potentially making the person in the car behind you happy, but you're not making the uh, baristas happy. So. Yeah, it's a thing on TikTok. It probably, I've probably seen, there's like YouTube videos of it too. I don't know. It's nice. Um, but I was curious what was happening because the guy in front of me was like looking in his rear view mirror and like looking at me. I was like, why are you looking at me? He was, he was assessing me. He was determining whether or not he, he would pay for me because the person in front of him paid for him. Uh, and I'll be honest, I didn't pay for the person behind me because I was kind of taken by surprise. And I was like, I went to pay. And they're like, oh, the person in front of you paid. And I was like, oh, that's cool. And I just got my coffee and left. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Happiness is a unicorn. Happiness is eating potatoes. Happiness is sadness. The thing is, like, if you're paying for the person behind you and then they decide to pay for the person behind you, they had to pay anyways. It only really works if you don't pay for the person behind you because that way you – Get something out of it, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Take that mental. Yeah, that's the other thing. But like, I pay with card, and and so like, there isn't. I don't have any cash to give a tip. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Let's stop talking about that. But this is what we're building today. Happy happiness is having no memory leaks. Um, let me pull up the code. I'll show you what our to do list looks like. Um. We got to make it look good. That's that's mainly what's on the agenda today is to make it look good. Um, yeah, and automatically show the latest messages. I think the other thing I'm going to do is um, randomize the displayed messages. So that way, when you go when you go to the page, it's not always in the same order. It randomizes them. Uh, we want to make it look more like a museum wall in a gallery. So we'll add a background image, put some background inside of the frames. We'll fix the the padding and the spacing inside of the frames. That's the plan for today, and we'll deploy it so that anyone in the world can go to the website and see all the, the happiness is messages. Um, cool. Let's say hi to everybody, and let you. I'll let you know how the how the how this stream works. Uh, it's really easy. You kind of just sit wherever you are and take it in. And if you have the chat open, you're more than welcome to uh, to participate. You can you can say hi. You can uh, give me a coding tip. You can help other people that are in the chat. Uh, it's a good old, good old fashioned Twitch stream. And uh, Flying Llama says, happiness is CJ's shell setup. Thanks. What's up, Lime Modes? Hello. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'll let you know if, if it works. Streamlabs has been having issues today. Um, so if commands stop working, somebody let me know. I might have to toggle it on and off. Um, but you can see in the chat that some people have uh, uh, team badges and country flags. So King Rapula has the South African flag and the uh, Tux Linux Penguin as their logo. Uh, Limeotes has the United States of America flag and the Node.js logo. Uh, Mr. Ben Coder has the United Arab Emirates flag. Uh, One Line of Me has the View, flag, uh, View logo. Uh, Phoenix Rising has the U.S. flag and the Salesforce team logo. Uh, Pablo Peng has the Italy flag and the JS uh, team logo. So you too can set all of all of this stuff. Um, trying to figure out how to mod Among Us, like an active game in progress. Not sure. She dot. <laughs> she dot Moe. How's it going? I feel like it's been a while. Hopefully you're doing okay. Shout out to She dot. I don't know if you've been streaming recently. Yeah, but um, uh, she dot made this this nice little animation that you see on the opening screen. That's from she dot. Cool. Okay. Um, badges. How to set your badge? Yeah. So I'll set my team badge. Um. Uh, here. So if you go to the font awesome cheat sheet brand cheat sheet. Um. Yeah, that pixel art is dope. Also, whenever you see a notification pop up, they did that pixel art too. Um, there's a thing called dropship. Oh, and yeah, I was just wondering, like, you're probably like you're sitting in on a game, and then yeah, you 
I don't know. How would that work? Okay. Uh, but you can pick any uh, image from uh, this page and set it as your team badge. Let's see which one I'm going to do. Yeah, Shedot says, I've been lurking past streams. Well, that's good. That's good that you're still out there. You have a cool uh, new avatar. It's nice. Mod oh, modification, not moderation. I've got mod, like, like mod on the brain. Uh, so yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Actually modding um, Among Us. Yeah, that's dope. Let me know how that goes. Um, I'm going to go, just because I see, I'm going to go with the Grunt logo. I feel like I've picked this in the past, but... Uh, if you're not familiar with it, Grunt.js is a library people used to use, they don't really use it anymore, um, to run their build task. It was a task runner. This quickly got replaced by Gulp, and then Gulp quickly, quickly not quickly, I mean it got replaced by, for the most part, by Gulp, and then eventually that got replaced by Webpack, and now you get a bunch of different options. But I'm going to set my team badge as Grunt. So in the chat, I just do exclamation mark team, followed by Grunt, which is the word that came from this page right there, see it? Uh, and now, whenever I say something in the chat, uh, it'll have that team badge on it. Look at that, got the little grunt logo. GitLab, nice, email Astra. Okay, oh, you got the, the Docker logo, nice. What's your team badge? Oh, uh, um, is it Erlang? <laughs> I, it looked like the um, the Internet Explorer, like IE, well, not in Explorer, but IE Edge. Yeah, it's Erlang, nice. Erlang. We're learning all kinds of things today. Erlang is a programming language. Look at it. Um, I mean, it's a lot. Of, uh, apparently, it's a lot of other things too, according to Wikipedia. But it's a general-purpose, concurrent, functional programming language and garbage-collected runtime system. The term Erlang is used interchangeably with Erlang slash OTP or Open Telecom Platform. Very good. <laughs> the Kotlin badge is sold out. <laughs> uh, that's that's funny because. Um, I mean, is there not a Kotlin bat? <laughs> there is no Kotlin bat. Okay. I just thought it was funny because it's not sold out. It's free. Anybody can use it. Yeah, you have the black tie one. Yeah, I've used that one before. Okay. Uh, the other thing is you can set your country. So um, in the chat, if you do exclamation mark country, uh, followed by your two character country code, that's the easiest way to get it working. Uh, for, so for me, it's the US, and that will set it. Or the Erlang icon looks almost like Docker. Let's see. I don't see it. <laughs> Maybe there was another icon. Happiness is eating pizza. I agree. Though I am trying to eat healthy lately. But we got uh, we went grocery shopping yesterday and we got the ingredients for a cauliflower crust pizza. So that'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, lastly, you can set your... Not lastly. There are a few other things. You can set your status. Um, so let's see what my status is right now. Definitely not in a hot tub. <laughs> That's true. Um... So if you do exclamation mark set status, is it set dash status? I always forget. I think it's set dash status. Um, and then set your status. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about pronouns in just a second. It is, oh wait, it sets, no, no set status? Or it, no, it is. <laughs> we'll try it like this. Um, what's my status today? Hmm. No dash. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Um, I mean, it doesn't, it, it, honestly, it's inconsequential. It doesn't really matter, matter that much. <laughs> um, trying to eat healthy. There we go. Because if I put it out there in the world, maybe it'll make, it'll make it, uh, actually, we'll do it again. We'll do it with like a little apple emoji or something like that because if you put it out there in the world it makes it more likely to actually happen because the thing is, like i like eating sugary and fatty foods it's just tasty you know it's i really enjoy myself when i'm eating those kinds of foods but you know it's not good for my health gotta live long and keep on streaming you know <laughs> um, but uh, now that i've set my status it'll show below my message so uh trying to eat healthy okay um uh, you too can set your status, but make sure that it's appropriate. It should be safe for work. Um, anything that is inappropriate um, should um, what's the word? Um, oh, don't don't do it. Don't do anything inappropriate. <laughs> you will be banned or timed. Oh, you'll be timed out and potentially banned if you set an inappropriate status. So, 
just be nice. Uh, and what's up, uh, Karomos? I don't know why the the Future Man um, emote didn't render in my overlay. That's actually really interesting to me. Let's look at it. Okay. I'm going to hide my screen just in case I accidentally reveal like a token or something like that. Let's see how what it tried to do. Oh. It's possible that that emote doesn't have a 4.0 um, sizing? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's the issue. I'm 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 almost I'm always choosing 4.0, but 4.0 doesn't exist for that emote. I should fix that. <laughs> What's up, Chris Amater? Uh Do I support LGBTQIA plus? Um, I guess you could call me an ally. I I appreciate people and accept everyone as they are, and that's a great segue to talking about pronouns. Um. So. Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, no, that no, it's not. Streamlabs. There it is. Okay. So uh, in the chat, you can set your preferred pronouns. Um, and this is on the topic of uh, LGBTQIA+. Um, What's the acronym? Yeah, that's the one. Um, in that not everyone um, prefers the pronouns that they may appear to prefer. Like a lot of people say uh, he all the time when the person that you're talking to may not prefer that. So to help me out, you can set your pronouns in the chat. Um, these, are, these are your options. She, he, they, they, co, none, they, hi, it, one, m, or yo. You can choose any one of these and um, they'll appear next to your messages. So I know what you prefer. Um, so for me, I prefer he and him. So I would do exclamation mark pronoun he. Uh, but you two, you can pick anyone from this list. So you can do she or they or they or co. Um, if you prefer a pronoun that's not in this list, you can you can DM me and I can try and add it. But we we set up a specific list to prevent people trolling or, or trying to set inappropriate things. So pick one from the list and then uh, your pronouns will show up in my overlay. Um, I know there is a Twitch extension that, that does pronouns all across, um, all across Twitch. And I know you can set it up with... Um, Franker faces. Yeah. Yeah. We are very inclusive on this channel. We we let we let PHP developers hang out here. <laughs> uh what's uh, what's oh is this the um is this the extension? Thanks, Alka. Um Cool. Yeah, yeah. Check it out. This is really cool. You can do so mine mine is specific to this channel, but um you can use this all across uh um, other channels. Pronoun DB? API docs? Cool. Yeah. Um, actually, yeah, because this is these are things we haven't considered, like avoid. Um, as in, um, please don't use my pronouns. Or like I, I don't pref I don't want you to use any pronouns. Refer to me by my name. Um, though for that we actually have uh, we have alias, don't we? I thought we did. I think you can do pronoun, nah, pronoun none, pronoun none, and then yeah, so like Infi has, yeah, yeah, which, which means that um, I will refer to Infi as Infi, <laughs> yeah, exactly, but this is good, I'm, I'm going to bookmark this because this, uh, I mean, the list may change, so uh, it'd be cool if we were pulling it from an API. Okay, what else can we do here? Um, yeah, no, I, I, it was just a simple dig on PHP. The thing is, we don't really do any language hating on this channel. Um, everything is welcome. Instinct, thank you for that resub. Two month resub. Um, I need to uh, acknowledge all of the things that have happened, the support events that have happened. Chance, oh, you're totally right, Alka. I mean, somebody mentioned it earlier, but th this is in regards to like the emotes rendering, I think. Um. We need, I, I need a <laughs> list of things that I need to do. Because if you've been watching Coding Guarding from the past few months, it's just been me coding random things, which is fun. But we used to have like very specific things that we were working on. But yeah, uh, there's no language hate here, no language bashing. Uh, everything's welcome. Um, all languages suck equally. <laughs> like They all have their pitfalls. They all have things that are good about them as well. Um, so uh, yeah, but I like to use JavaScript. A lot of people hate on JavaScript, but um, I'm really good with JavaScript and productive with it. Now, let's talk about the drop game. In the chat, you can type exclamation mark drop me, 
And I do, yeah, I use TypeScript at work. I don't like using it on screen, but I do use it at work. There's nothing wrong with, I mean, relatively. <laughs> but in the in the chat, type exclamation mark drop me. Your uh, avatar will fall from the sky. And uh, if it lands in the garden, you'll get your name on the screen for a second. Like, who's that? Who is that? So the closer you are to the center, the larger your name will be. I can't read it. A gin toy? I can't, it's too, it's too far away. I can't read it. Mr. Demon Wolf, what's up, buddy? What's wrong with the JavaScript? I mean, I guess wrong is a relative term, but magic. Great drop and great drop one line of me. There are thing. There are a lot of, um, hey, X Dallas, thank you for that reset as well. There are a lot of, uh, I learned this term from a, form, from a former uh, coworker and friend, current friend. I haven't talked to him in a while, though. I should reach out to him. But uh, he says, well, he's talked about he's talking about other things. But I will say JavaScript has a lot of foot guns in it. It has a lot of things where you can shoot yourself in the foot, which is um, an expression people use when things, it's easy to do something wrong. Uh, extra step. Thank you for that prime sub as well. Much appreciated. Um, so uh, there's that. There, there are certain things about it where if, if, this is okay. Uh, that's pretty good. Um, the there there are things about it that if you don't know what you're doing, it's pretty easy to get wrong because it's not in, it's not intuitive in that there are certain things. And and I guess that's that's my main argument for it is if you learn the language like you should. If if you're claiming to to that you uh, that you know a specific programming language and you use it regularly, then you should learn it. Um, you shouldn't just assume that it works a certain way because you're used to working in some other language. And that's where a lot of that sentiment comes from. Um, because there are a lot of people coming into JavaScript from other programming languages and they expect it to work that way, but it doesn't. And really, if you just, if you just read the specification, you'll see why JavaScript behaves that way. But for a lot of people, it is a foot gun. <laughs> Happiness is being accepted as a PHP developer. Nice. Um, I guess... We have, the thing is still running in the background, so any happiness is messages still show up, which is cool. Oh, is that a foot ste stepping on a Lego? Nice sound of gaming. Whose emote is that? That's pretty cool. Uh, ADR foot. Cool. Um, yeah, so you, you get used to, I mean, I've gotten used to it. I've been using JavaScript for five plus years now. Uh, I mean, even more before that, but like exclusively JavaScript for the past five plus years. And somebody asked, I missed the, the the comment, but somebody asked, what would I choose for a project? I would choose JavaScript because I'm most productive in it, and I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, are we forgetting anything? We got pronouns. We got badges. We got countries. We got statuses. You learned about the drop game. I'll, I'll let you know if you are new here. We do have uh, some frequently asked questions you can check out. Um... I don't know why that one got caught by auto mod, but <laughs> happiness is not having tinnitus. It's true. Here's the thing. Like, tinnitus is the ringing in the ear, right? Somebody, like, there was a, a while ago, so I was streaming, and somebody randomly mentioned, do you have tinnitus? Which I, I'm pretty sure. Hopefully this isn't anything weird. I'm pretty sure it's like a ringing in the ear. Um, tinnitus? I don't know how to spell tinnitus. The perception of sound when no corresponding external sound is present. Yes. So when, when you have like a ringing in your ear, uh, when there's not actually a ringing, you potentially have tinnitus. But I don't know. Somebody mentioned it. Um, and it just so happened like that day I had been hearing ringing in my ear. It's totally inconsequential. I don't know. Um, does any mod know how I can hide? Oh, yeah, there we go. I don't want to show messages caught by auto mod. Uh, and I don't want to show moderator actions. There we go. There we go. Okay. The sound. Oh, somebody mentioned the sound of metal uh, this weekend, or not this weekend? It's. I've been off since. Uh, <laughs> I've been out of, off work since Wednesday, so this entire week has been the weekend for me. But like it was t Wednesday or Thursday. Somebody mentioned the sound of metal. I need to watch it. Um. Yeah, we, we checked out Deno a while back. Um. Okay. Did the frequently asked questions work? It didn't. Um, it's possibly a hum, like the uh, tinnitus, you mean? Here we go. This is the URL. <laughs> Git.io slash coding dash garden dash, F dash FAQs. Uh, this has all of the frequently asked questions. I think it's linked in the description, in the um, um, the, the about stuff on, on Twitch. But if you're new here, it's tons of questions answered. Um, 
we've been doing this a long time, so we get a lot of common questions. Um, you're more than welcome to ask stuff in the chat, but if I don't answer it immediately, either I'm too busy or I've already answered it before, so feel free to check out the frequently asked questions. And also, the people here are, are really helpful, so they'll answer questions in the chat as well. Um, but uh, in, term, in terms of, like, have you done a video on X? I think that's a, um, a commonly asked question. You can search my YouTube. Um, there's also this site I built. And if you go here and you search for Dino, we did it like the day uh, uh, Dino, Deno? No, Dino. I used to call it Deno. Dino is the correct pronunciation. Um, the first day V1 was released, I tried to build a CRUD API with it. There have been a lot of improvements since, but I have used a little bit of Dino. And I started writing some Dino libraries. Um, yeah, tried. <laughs> I miss my mohawk too. I mean, it was like a a, a top top knot bun mohawk, but um, I think I'm just gonna grow my hair out again, cause why not? All right, I right, see you later, Abel. Thanks for dropping by. Um, oh yeah, I, I get, let's let's acknowledge any of these support events that have happened. Um, enhance, uh, Jim with that 11 month resub, Automate with that 10 month resub, fight with the one year. I mi I, I miss that. Maybe it happened before the stream started. But uh, thank you very much, Thight. A whole year. Um, I'm going to turn off reward requests. Should I have done that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, thank you for that. Instinct with the two-month Prime resub. Thank you for clicking that button uh, two months in a row. And X Dallas, thank you for that Prime resub. And Zraz Dev uh, with the five-month Prime resub. Um, wait. No, this is five minutes ago. Shraz Dev with that Prime resub. Did did we see this notification pop up? I think, I think, I think, uh, we found an error though. There's definitely an error in the console. It was a new sub. Um, though, Thight resubbed and then there was an error in parsing emotes. That's my fault. That's my fault. <laughs> let me, let me fix, this is totally unrelated, but in terms of the stream notifications, I think we can fix a bug really quick. So, um, we have a function for parsing emotes in resub messages. Uh, bugs, yeah. Um, parse emotes. All right, give me a second. I think this function is defined elsewhere. Line 102. Um, it's a bug, not a feature. <laughs> That's why Thight's message didn't show up for sure. Uh, yeah, line 102 in parse emote. So here we are. I'm going to go down to line 102. Um, parsed message or message dot replace. And this is saying can't access property replace of null. So either parse message or message is null. Um, I think this should fix it if we add or the empty string, right? <laughs> that should fix it. <laughs> we can only hope. All right. Uh, the um, yeah. We can only hope. That sh that should fix it. Okay. Um, I think that's it. Am, am I missing anything? Or should we just get started coding? Oh, I have to say hi to everybody. Yeah. So if you want if you want to see if my code's working, you could you could drop a sub right now. But I think the um that's that's right that's right, Alka. So this one that possible do we does anybody know? Zrazdev, are you here? Did you hear a sound play whenever you subbed? Because if you didn't, there's an there's another bug in the code. Uh the code I was just showing is just totally vanilla JavaScript. Yeah. It could have. It happened eight minutes ago. <laughs> there's a whole lot. There's so many bugs here. <laughs> All right, let's say hi to everybody. Um, hey, Danana. <laughs> Thank you for that. You did not have to do that, but I appreciate you. Uh, Danana live with that new sub, which actually worked. I think the issue might be with Prime subs, though. So if you have a Prime, feel, feel free to use it on me. Okay, Alka's saying it did play. Okay. Um, and Danana live. Thank you very much for that sub. I appreciate you. It works. It works. Yeah. Thanks for being here. All right. Let's say hi to everybody. Um, 
in the chat. You can say any one of these things. Hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, good day, coding hi vo hi or boga hey. Um, I feel like we updated this, but you can also say hola. And Orsi, thank you for that prime sub. Now I feel bad. Now I'm just fishing for subs. Um, let's see. Oh, and uh, let's take a quick stretch. Hola. Um, but let me see. Yeah, so there's no errors in the console, and then this was a brand new Prime sub. Thank you. You're too kind. <laughs> Thank you for clicking that button. Um, but it worked. Okay. Um, Good evening, you beautiful flower, my deepest and warmest blessings. Oh, thank you, YY. Yeah, so uh, this is a regular expression, which is, um, I, don't know, I guess I was going to explain what a regular expression is. I don't think I need to. If your chat message matches any one of these words, it will be filtered over here on the uh, on the right-hand side. Left-hand side, this is the live chat. I leave it open so that people know that we're still live because we're going back in time to 45 minutes ago <laughs> when Nafto was the first person to say hello. And thank you, Donata Live. I appreciate the comment. Um, okay, uh, Nafto, hello. How's it going? Chief Mostardo, hello. What's up, Limeotes? Uh, some of you may have noticed I added a few VIPs today at the beginning of the stream. I feel like it's been a long time since we added VIPs, so I just went through. Any names that I recognize, any people that had like a thousand plus messages and people that hang out all the time and contribute to the community, you got VIP. So congrats on that. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome, Limeotes. You, you definitely deserve it. Um, so, hello, uh, Philippe, and Mark, and Nama Scaro, and it's me, Delano, and Sequel Gordster. I gave you uh, VIP as well, Sequel Gordster. Uh, what's up, DF Dez, uh, DF, DVF Dez, and Cookies and Cream, and Easy, and Me Not Santa, and Mama. Hello, what's up, Prowin, and Ojin Toji. Hello, what's up, Drop Mania Official, and ML Astra, and Cypher from Pakistan. Very good. What's up, Depo Pond, and Mark Boots. Howdy, howdy. What's up, Salty Ohm, and Doc, and Mr. Ben Coder, and The Art of Missy. Hello, welcome. Hello, Danielle, and One Line of Me, and El Coco. How's it going? What's up, Sound of Gaming, and Ashley B. What's up, Fun Planet, and Palaugo, and Magic, and Julian. Hello, thank you for those bits earlier, Julian. What's up, Eman, and Adamate, and Nikos, and Potato is Gritson, and uh, Guarav, Bourgeois, and Jerbin, and Damirka, and J.S. Kenny. What's up, Sunstar, and Saman from Iran. Very good. Big hello. Hello. <laughs> What's up, uh, C. Diego? And Valco, um, hello friends. Uh, Scott H, who's Scott H? I've been saying hello friends for at least two years now. <laughs> I can prove it to you. I mean, I, it's a very generic term. I'm sure other people have said hello friends as well. Um, but I, I believe, like it, I, I like it because it is a, um, uh, it's very inclusive. You know, it's not like hey guys. Um, and I consider you all my friends. I appreciate you for being here and hanging out with me. I mean, we can go back probably even three. I mean, these these was this was like really before I was streaming. You can look at my very first stream, which was in um, February of 2018. It was on YouTube. Let, let's 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 take a trip down memory lane really quick. Um, we'll do this. Let's turn the sound up. I used to have a, a different intro song as well. Wait, is it going through? It's really, really low. Let me start it over. Hello, friends. The sound is low, but look, February 2018, I said hello, friends. All right, let's listen to the song. Coding garden. <laughs> okay, <laughs> doesn't matter. Totally irrelevant. Um, Claude, how's it going? What's up, Cookify and Sotheral? Greetings. Uh, what's up, Kozas and GTC and, and Vicus and Chris Amater? And what's up, Linzon and Cybercyclonic and Pablo Peng? Just waiting to get my salary to give some subs. Hey, you do not need to do that, but I appreciate you. What's up, Mark? And Deep Space, today I started wondering what percentage of code in the world we think is for fun or side projects compared to the code of actual production making product. I mean, I think there's a ton of like completely unused code. You could consider that fun or side project code. I don't know. <laughs> How's the Pokemon addiction going? Uh, I went one day without opening a single pack, which is uh, the first time in like four months. Um, I have a good... 
cache of Pokemon cards so I don't have to go out searching for them. They're just in my basement, and when I feel like opening some cards, I can. It's going all right. What's going on? Right. What's up, Battle Fame? And Phoenix Rising and uh, Raj Sep and Ahmed and Hello King Rapula and Soul and Sprinkled Cupcake and a Le Dreamer was taken. Uh, what is up, Gabriel and Blue Hippie and Lost in Mind? Hello, Worsty and Ark Neka and Alexandra's and Dewanch and Frustrated Coder. Hello, Fion and Harchiko and Let's End Deep. Uh, glad you're here after a while. Uh, Swartz Child, hello. Could you say how you shape and take care of your mustache? I don't really take care of it. Can we, uh, can we enhance? I don't know. I mean, this is going to be like a zoom in. There is a mustache here. See it? But, uh, it's hidden by my beard. Um, I shampoo and condition it. And then I used, uh, basically like hairstyling glue to make it pointy. That's about it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I totally forgot that I set this up. Let's 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 use the no no. Actually, I think you do need to see uh, you need to see this. Um, so yeah, that's it. Shampoo, condition, and then uh, use a little bit of hair styling glue. And what's up, uh, uh, Jay Garcon and uh, Schwim Lols? Do I use an ORM? Sometimes I use Objection JS. It's my favorite. Um, this one. Cool. Uh, hello, Rohil and Blank and Alka. Hello, hello. What's up, Root Privilege? Uh, I do use TypeScript at work. What's up, Binary King and Automagic and Slushing and uh, DX Foriant? Doing good. Hello, Rask. Uh, and is Razel or Wazel? Is Ravazel Wazel? My Saturday is pretty good. Got a decent amount of sleep. I uh, got some things done this morning. It's a good Saturday. What's up, uh, Persanth and Wollum and uh, Najai and Thight? And uh, thanks again, Thight, for the one year resub. And hello, Ryan Hawkins and Marcus and Rushdroff and Jonah and Je Jelly Max. First time watching my stream. Well, welcome. Thanks for being here. Hello, YY. Oh, yeah. We, we talked about your message earlier. That's a beautiful message. Thank you for being here. What's up, Mikey Man? And Jew and Hedge Ed, uh, Hedge Hedge. What's up, Law? Create another bug and get another sub. <laughs> uh, it's true. It's true. It, it, <laughs> I mean, when we were first working on those overlays, that's kind of how it was. Like, just to, so people could test if it was working, they were subbing and giving bits but it works it works and great drop i am frustrated coder i just noticed good drop hello hacks what's up ftd gomez and dash and Amr and uh, randy marsh oh thank you randy marsh much appreciated what's up acs and jake edichu and hetty and nate oh thank you yeah i haven't been doing saturday streams but i didn't stream yesterday because i was kind of busy um so yeah yeah 48? What are you talking about, Kusei? <laughs> the number 48. Uh, and hello, Doomvit and Jim McDonald and Darth Millennial. Uh, what's up, uh, Rodukuth? Uh, I have a question. Sorry for my English, but I'm learning. Uh, how should I see JavaScript to learn it? I mean, how should I think? I'm new to this. So how should you think about JavaScript? Uh, I mean, JavaScript can be used in many different places, but I think the, the main way to think about JavaScript is that it adds interactivity to web pages. Um, makes them interactive. Now, like this this site that we're going to be working on today, you can't really tell the interactivity because when the page loads, you just see all of the, the data on the page. But behind the scenes, um, actually, let's let's do this. Let's uh, simulate that we have a really, really slow network connection. Uh, we're going to throttle this down to um, 2G. And what will happen is you're actually not going to see the data immediately. Because behind the scenes, JavaScript is actually requesting the data from my server. And then once it gets back to the data, it's looking at that data and dynamically adding things to the page. So uh, technically, JavaScript is making this page interactive. Um, there's only there's nothing that the user can do to get feedback from. Um, so we'll have to wait a little bit. <laughs> we actually have to wait for the data to transfer. And then after the data comes back, then it renders on the page. Um, let's see. Did we make an XHR request? Oh, it. Oh, I mean, is it having trouble even down? Uh, regardless, let's not throttle the network. And we should see, um, yeah, it just loads instantly. But it actually isn't loading instantly because it has to make that network, network request. So that that's one thing. Um, I don't know why this came to mind, but we built this thing, Dung Hero, online. 
And the idea with this is you have all these little animals jumping around on the page. And when you click on uh, a poop emoji, that collects the poop, or it should anyways, yeah, and then increases the count. So the fact that we can click on these, these poops is JavaScript. JavaScript lets us do that. It lets us listen for when the user clicks on it, and then we can write code that does something in response to a user clicking on it. In this case, we send a request to our server, which, which increases the number of dung collected. You can see other people going here and clicking on dungs. That's why the number is going up so fast. Uh, and I will mention, I'm really proud of this website because uh, it's it has not crashed because this number six wait what is it six hundred and sixty five thousand six hundred and twenty three dungs collected, um, that's a number that's in memory. So this server has not restarted since I launched it. But all of that to say, JavaScript makes the page interactive. We we literally wrote JavaScript code that listens for when a user clicks, and then when they click, we send a request to a server. Uh, we also wrote JavaScript code that moves the little animals around the screen. So JavaScript makes the page interactive. Uh, when JavaScript is running on the back end, it's a whole different beast. But that's how you should think about it. It's how you so HTML is like the structure, CSS is the style, JavaScript make things happen. Cool. And uh, we'll finish saying hello. What's up, Bruce and Infi and Plank uh, and King Coding and Salma and Dayu, Dayu, yeah. Need to learn REST API. Where to start? I have some videos. Search, search, you can search my channel for REST API on YouTube. That might be a good place to start. Um, what's up, Melinda Beans and Pumps and Sant Devalos? Thank you all for being here. I appreciate you. Uh, I don't really code in Python that much, but I have coded in it before. That's a cool emote. Bob Ross Canvas. Nice. <laughs> What's up, George? <laughs> All right. Uh, let's let's get back to um, writing some code. We'll answer this one, and then we'll write some code. Uh, Steven is asking, how do we level up from a senior, uh, up to a, a senior JavaScript developer from a mid? Um, I think the, I mean, it's it's hard to say because every company is different. Like typically like senior and mid and junior, uh, a senior or mid or junior le label at one company may be totally different from the labels at another company and the job responsibilities of those people. But I would say like a senior typically has a lot of real world experience because the, the biggest thing that a senior is bringing to the table is um, that past experience. So that way they can make very informed decisions because you can have a mid that is a really good developer. Like you, you, they, they, you give them a task. They can code it without, like, without obviously without any help. They can do it very efficiently. They could probably write really good code, but they may not have that breadth of experience to pull from when it comes to things like deciding um, the architecture of the site that you're building. Um, so I think I think one of the, I mean one of the main ways to level up is to just continue on and, and keep doing your best because the more you do it, the more experience that you'll get. Hey, Aknot now. Thank you for that resub. Otron Mason Porse Jota. Buenos dias, mi amigo. Well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it's it really the main separator is experience. But also, um, I mean, going from like a junior to a mid, the, the biggest thing you can do is just being self-sufficient. Like, uh, be able to figure things out without really having to ask for help, like being able to find the answer yourself on the web, um, or being able to do enough research that you have a really good idea about like why something is happening or why a bug is occurring or, or why something's not working the way you want it to work so that you can talk to a senior and very quickly get the answer to that. Whereas a junior may need complete and total help. I don't know. Yeah, and Alka says, CSS is my favorite part. Yeah, we're going to be working on CSS right now to adjust the styles. And I do use feathers. I have quite a few videos on feathers if you check out my uh, my YouTube channel. All right. All right. Um, HTML and JavaScript with maps. Yeah, uh, search my YouTube channel. Um, actually, one of my most popular videos on YouTube is from using maps with React. Though, if you're just using vanilla JavaScript, you don't want to watch that video. Streamlabs bot is just not working today. We can actually check it. We'll toggle it off, off and on again. Toggle it off. To toggle it on. There we go. <laughs> YouTube. There we go. Um. Yeah, you can just search my just search for coding garden map. You'll probably find a video on JavaScript maps, but um. I don't know if I have a, I don't have any like tutorial that's straight up 
uh, maps with vanilla JS, but I do remember doing a coding improv where we used, we, we built something on a map um, and we did it with vanilla JavaScript. Now, this app was completely and totally useless, um, but I think it's like Bean Hiker. Uh, yeah, it's, it's totally useless, but the idea is a map loads. You can click somewhere on the map and you can catch Pokemon. And then if you click somewhere else on the map, um, you possibly can find cans of beans, just like we did. And you get a nice little haiku, haiku. Start on a trailhead, hike until you're happy, then you drive back home. But you can continue hiking. Oh, look at that. Like, this is very rare. We've gotten two beans in a row. Uh, yeah, so usually you can just keep hiking. <laughs> and then you'll get some beans. Yeah, we, we, got a, we got a shiny Pokemon. And more beans. We're getting really lucky with the beans today. Cool. Uh, we'll take a quick stretch. But this app we built with Leaflet.js which is a, a totally open source library for uh, making maps in an app. Yeah. <laughs> this app was very surreal. <laughs> I mean, most of the things we do on Coding Improv are, which I really love. Um, it just totally removes your expectations of, of like what a thing should do. Um, and really makes you remember that you're alive. You just really remember that you're alive. Things are happening. You're, you're experiencing the world as it is. But in this video, uh, we do use maps with Vanilla.js. You can check that out. It might, it might not help with Google Maps because it is a separate library. All right. All right, all right. Let's write some code. So uh, for those of you just joining us, what we're working on today is our happiness app. Um, uh, not that one. I've tried Nux. I haven't built like really big apps with it though. But the idea is uh, in the chat, you can type happiness is space followed by some statement. And uh, that quote will show up here in a nice little frame. So we have a ton of quotes already, um, but that's what we're working on today. But we need what we need to work on probably first is like some styling. Happiness is cool. Yeah. And so if we look at the... Um, the most recent ones, we can see that happiness is cool by Shaz. <laughs> happiness is eating pasta at 2 a.m. Um, but we need to uh, we need to work on the styles because for some of these quotes, they like overlap with the frame. Uh, we also want to add some background images, and then we want to put this on the web so that anybody can see all of these happiness quotes. Um, so happiness is finding find and fix a bug without introducing new ones. Exactly. Uh, yeah, so we'll just open this up with VS Code, and uh, we'll get into it. Um, and we'll also look at our to-do list. Yeah, I mean, one of the things we definitely need to do is show the latest messages, because right now you have to refresh the page to see the latest messages. But I think the thing that I want to work on first is just displaying random messages instead of displaying them in chronological order. That way, when you load the page, it just shows new ones, it shows old ones, that kind of thing. Uh, so let's actually work on this first. Um, and that I'm actually going to do on the back end. So the front end is the thing running inside of the web browser. When the page loads, it loads all of the data from the back end, which, is our, which are all of these happiness quotes. So what I'm going to do on the back end is a custom SQL query that randomizes uh, the select. Um, so let's do that. And we can do that right here. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how we do it, because right now you can see that it's 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 this little bit of code right here. And this is using a library called connects. But at the end of the day, this little bit of code, db parentheses messages, actually gets turned into select uh, star from uh, messages. That's actually what that little bit of code is doing in, in SQL. Uh, but what we want to do is like order by, there's like a random function built into Postgres, and that will randomize the select on the back end. Um, or is it like order by? But that's what we want to do. Let's make it happen. So uh, I'm going to search for SQL uh, order by random, just so I can find the actual SQL syntax for it. Um, and I actually didn't know this was a thing till the other day I started searching for it. Um, Postgres, because specifically Postgres has this random function built in. And so that's what we want to do. 
Um, and it, I guess it's a mathematical function that actually just returns a random value, and then it's actually sorting based on that value, like sorting numerically based on that value. However, because we're in connects, we need uh, this probably isn't built in. Like we can look at the connects library and see if they have like order by. Um, and we might have to do like a connects raw statement, so that way we do an actual SQL query. Um, because right now you can order by a specific column, but I don't think uh, we could try. Oh, well, here it is. Order by raw. Nice. This is what we need. We need to just do order by raw, and then just pass in um, random like that. Let's see if it works. If we don't see this as the first one, then we know it works. Yep. Yeah, so now every time we load the page, all of the frames are in a completely random order. Happiness is breakfast. Happiness is JS. Happiness is getting a GPU right now, says the frustrated coder. <laughs> happiness is word wrapping? Yeah, we're, we're wrapping words, now we are. Uh, happiness is coffee. The frame itself is, oh, we also need to randomize that. That's, we got work to do. We got work to do. Yeah, so the, the backend is written in uh, Node.js with Express, and then we're using uh, this connects library for, uh, we, did, we use the connects library for the migration, so this is the migration that creates the table. And then we also have connects code that actually um, queries and also inserts into the table. Great. One thing done. <laughs> Let's mark it off. Done. Uh, where's our checklist? Is it here? No. Is it here? No. Is it here? Yes. Uh, randomized displayed messages. Great. Um, next up, what did Infi just mention? Oh, the docs. Yeah, we could do that. I think the the main difference uh, on the Connects website when you change to Postgres is it just changed the changes the how it displays the SQL syntax. I think that's the only difference. You'll see when we go from Postgres to like, wait, is it not working? I don't think it's working. Um, because I know like in in my SQL it uses backticks, but like in Postgres, eh, it's not working. I wonder why that's not working. But in Postgres, I think it uses single quotes instead of backticks like this. That's the main thing. Um, all right. <laughs> what do we do next? Next up, we um, we could we should random we should randomize the frames. Let's do that. Randomize the frame. Um, so that way it's, because right now what it's doing is we have five different frames and it's just cycling through them. So you have fancy frame, square less fancy frame, square fancy frame, uh, or sorry, like rect rectangle, square, another rectangle, and then we go back to this one and it's just the exact same order. We're not checking for duplicate messages, uh, mainly because two people could have the same happiness quote. Um, I mean, I, I guess we, we could do validation and not let the same user say the same thing twice. Uh, yeah, improv suggestion is on, but it should be sold out. <laughs> you should uh, not be able to do it. Or were you able to do it? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> I need to disable that. I thought it was paused. Uh, improv. Is this redemption on? It is. Here, uh, take your money back. And actually, for everyone that has redeemed something today, you're all going to get your points back and um, we'll potentially do these things as you request them. It's just, it's hard for me to do these because they're not showing up in my um, in my overlay right now, but we'll, we'll, we'll look at them every now and then. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. I need to pause it. You're totally right. Okay, um, let's randomize the frames. So we're gonna go to the front end code over here and we can see how it's working uh, right now. We can see that um, we have ourselves, let me just run my linter really quick. 
uh, we have ourselves an array of frames. And what we're doing is we're just cycling through that array. Uh, we're just going one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And what we should do is get a random one every time. Um, and you can see that right here. We're just doing uh, I mod frames.length. So I is the index of the message, and we just uh, mod that on the frames length. So we convert the index in the array of messages into an index that makes sense for the frames array, and it kind of just cycles through them. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how we do this while keeping it random for every single one. Because, the, I mean, the tricky part is um, if I say get random frame here for the background image, it's going to get us a different random frame here for the style. Don't do that in production. Table sample? I'll look into that, Doc. But not right now. But I'll put it on the to-do list. Um, where's our to-do list? Here. Yeah, so do that. OK, um, so yeah, I have to figure out how can I associate a random frame with every single item in the messages array. I mean, I think what, I think what we could do is when we get back the messages from the API, we could do a little bit of pre-processing. So instead of immediately setting it on state, we could assign a random frame to each one. And that way, we can access that frame inside of the template. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, messages.map. And then for every message, uh, the map should return the message itself because that's what we want. But we're going to add a new property here. We're going to say message.frame is something like uh, get next frame. And that will, that will give, uh, give back uh, a random frame for, uh, for that. So um, here's what we need. We need a function called get next frame. Um, we need, I want to, I basically want to take this array of frames and shuffle it and then pull one out at a time. And then when it's empty, refill it and shuffle it again. That's what I want to do. So that way it's random, but it, you don't repeat it. Um, you don't repeat the same one twice within the, the next five. Does that make sense? <laughs> Does that make sense? Um, makes sense to me. Let's make it work though. So, um, let's say... Let current frames just be frames dot slice. So that's going to make a copy of the array. Um, and then we want to shuffle it. Uh, we wrote a shuffle function a while back. Should we copy and paste it or should we write it from scratch? Let's do a quick poll. I mean, I have a feeling you're going to tell me to write it from scratch, but we'll see. What to do? Scratch. Copy paste. You're right. You have one minute to vote. Vote now. And I'm going to take a drink of my beverage and potentially uh, do any redemptions that have happened. None. Oh, thank you, everyone. <laughs> Some people just want to get moving. Some people want me to, want me to see it right. Want to see me write it from scratch. I'll say, if it's a tie, I'll write it from scratch. Yeah, I, I, you, um, well, could still repeat at the end of it. Yeah, you're, you're totally right. Like, you could go from one set of five to the next set of five, where the last one is the same as the first one. You are true. Yeah. The in-place version of Fisher Yates. Yeah. I'm drinking Yerba Mate by Gayaki. Not sponsored, but a wonderful beverage that I really enjoy. And we even have a... Uh... Sorry about that, everyone. <laughs> the, so the sound was coming from my laptop and, and the uh, overlay alerts. But uh, The Art of Missy, thank you for that sub. Very much appreciated. Um, was that a new sub? It was. I appreciate you. Um, <laughs> but uh, we, we have a, we have a, we have a Yerba Mate emote here because I drink it so much. Not a sponsor. Um, oh, okay. Uh, winner is write it from scratch. Let's do it. So 
uh, there is this thing called the Fisher Yates shuffling algorithm. And um, at its core, it's actually really simple. It's, all, it's really simple. Oh, thank you, Missy. Very much appreciated. Um, but the idea is. Okay, I'll just read. I'll read you the Wikipedia definition. So the Fisher Yates shuffle is an algorithm for generating a random permutation of a finite sequence. So you have a list of things, and you want a random permutation. You want a random version of that list of things, uh, which is a finite sequence is a a list of things that is finite. It's not infinite. Um, the algorithm effectively puts all the elements into a hat. So you have a you have a list of things. You put them all into a hat, and then you ra you randomly pull one out of the hat and put it into your new list. And uh, you keep pulling out of the hat until you have no more in the hat. And now you have a new list that is in a random order. That's it. It's a really simple algorithm. Yeah. The in-place feature Yates is actually simpler. It's under the modern algorithm article in the Wikipedia. Let's look at the modern, <laughs> the modern algorithm. Because last time we did, we didn't do it in place. We created a new array and put the random things into it. Um, all right. Um, the modern version of the Fisher-Yates shuffle is designed for computer use, was introduced by Richard Durstenfield in 1964. Well, that's great. In the art of, um, the art of computer programming. This is actually like a, a thing. This. This book. Wait, that was written by Newth. Oh, I see. Written by Richard Durstenfield, popularized by Newth in this book, The Art of Computer Programming. Okay. It differs in a small but significant way, whereas a naive computer implementation would spend needless time counting the remaining, remaining numbers in step three, Durstenfield's solution is to move the struct numbers to the end of the list by swapping them with the last unstruck number at each iteration. This reduces the time's complexity to O of n compared to O of n squared. I mean, I, we still do it in O of n. Right? <laughs> yeah, modern, 1964. Um, okay, to shuffle an array of n elements. So this is, and this is interesting to see. This is actually pseudocode. So this is not any specific programming language. Um, this is, it's pseudocode. It's, it's written in a way that pretty much any programmer could understand it, and you could implement this in any programming language. So we could implement this in, uh, in JavaScript. Big O of what, constant time or bus? Let's see. Okay, so for every index in the length of the array going down. So, you no, know, from into, yeah, so it starts at the length of the array and goes down. J is a random integer such that um, zero is, yeah, so uh, J is a random index. We then swap the array at J and the array at I. Huh. And you can also do it going up instead of going down. So from 0 up to um, the length minus 2, get a random integer and swap them. This is actually really simple. Let's do it. We'll do the going up version. We're going up. So we're going to take this pseudocode, and we're going to turn it into JavaScript. Here we go. So we need a function called in place shuffle that takes in an array and then does this. But we have to turn it into real code. So this line that says from 0 up to n minus 2, we could just write a for loop where i starts at 0, and we go up until i is less than array.length minus 2. And then on each iteration, we increment i by 1. So that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up to the length of the array minus 2. Um, then we do this. So we need a random integer. Uh, that is greater than or equal to i and less than n. So we, I guess I see what it's doing. It's grabbing values from the end of the array randomly and then putting them at the beginning of the array. Very interesting. Yeah, uh, my, my linter prefers this just because it's a bit, it's more clear as to what's happening here versus plus plus. That's it. You can read about it um, in the linter rule, no plus plus. Uh, it says, because the unary plus and minus operators are subject to automatic semicolon insertion. That's something else to consider. And then there are other situations where like I plus plus and plus plus I actually mean different things. And so you should just be more explicit about which one you're using. That's the only reason I'm doing it. At the end of the day, um, it it does the same thing. It, it increments the variable. But uh, but this this is the less than or equal to sign. 
Because Mark is saying, um, oh, you mean for in? Yeah, this is so uh, we need a value less than or equal to i and less than in. Okay, so how do we do that? Um, we'll call this random index. Stop it, envy. <laughs> plus plus i plus equals one plus plus. Uh, that would that would do a thing. Okay, I mean that would be like a ridiculous interview question. What will be the what will be the final value of i after this line executes? I am done with this interview. That's my answer to that question. Okay. Um, we need a random value, so uh, math dot random, and we multiply that times the array length. So this gives us a random value between zero um, and in. We math dot floor it. So this this is a random value between zero and the length of the array, or uh, or in. Um, and I think I think it's fine to not do minus one here. For the loop condition, i is less than or equal to array dot length minus two, or i is less than array length minus one. Um. Um. That. Is that what you mean? <laughs> That's what we'll do. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. I is less than or equal to array dot length minus two because we want it to happen when length minus two, when I is equal to length minus two. Okay. Um, so this is going to give us a random value between zero and n. We need to make it between I and n. So I think we actually could just do I plus that, right? Or if it's right, no. Because I will start off at zero. No, that's not going to do it. Because we could pa possibly go past. And then array.length minus i. Random. Times the difference plus the base. Did I have it right? <laughs> so we do random. What's the what is the difference? Oh, it would be length minus i plus i. I think I like what I just had. Is this right? What is this? Uh, it's a lot of things, but right now we are writing the Fisher Yates in place shuffle algorithm. That's what we're doing right now. <laughs> um, i plus a random value between 0 and length minus 1 of the array. Because when i is 1, this will now be the smallest value is 1, and the largest value is um, length minus 1. Wait. Doc, this is harder. <laughs> this is harder than the way I was doing it before. Uh, oh, yeah, you're totally right. This does This does need parentheses. Uh, it's only hard because we have to think about this math here. The other way of doing it uh, was fine, but that's okay. Yeah, we're doing the in-place shuffle. I'm going to go ahead and log out the random index just so we can see what it ends up being. And then, now that we have that random index, we need to swap it in the array. So A at I becomes A at J, and A at J becomes A at I. It's actually really easy to do um, with... Uh, with destructuring. Um, so we can say the random index, so the array at the random index is equal to, no, 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 okay. I got it, I've got it, I've got it. We need two arrays. We need to take the values of this array and put them into the values of the left-hand side array. So what I do here is I say, we have array at random index and we have uh, array at uh, I. But then we want to swap that to become array at I and array at random index. So this, this is some fancy little syntax that basically says uh, put array at I at array at random index and put array at random index at array at I. 
That should work, right? Or am I completely and totally wrong? Is this is this going to do I need a temp variable? Yeah, that's what uh, Philippe is doing, what I just did. Well, let's see if it works. It may or may not work. And Kuzi, thank you very much for that uh, one year. One uh, one year. Uh, was that a tier two resub? A whole, u dang, a whole year of tier two? I appreciate you. Yeah, look at that. You got the, the fancy tractor tractor thing now. You might have already had that, honestly. <laughs> All right, this should work. My my thing is my uh, yeah. Th this is um, complaining because I'm reassigning here, which actually is a good error to get because I want to reassign. I want to re it. It needs to be in place. Um, so that's fine. And then we just return the array. Yeah, and I'll just ignore this this ignore this uh, this linter error. All right, now now we use it. So uh, when. We um, actually let's do this. We'll say current frames uh, equals starts off as an empty array, and I'll remind you what we're doing. Basically, we wrote this shuffling method because what I want to do is I want to take this array of five image frames, I want to shuffle it, so that way it's in a random order, and then I'll pick off one at a time, and then when it's empty, I'll sh I'll recreate it and reshuffle it and do it. F until we don't need it anymore. So that's what we're working on now. So now that we have the in place shuffle, we can try and test it. So right here, I'll say if current frames dot length um, is equal to zero. So if there are no current frames, then we can just say current frames equals um, in place shuffle with a copy of the array. So frames dot slice will create a copy of the array. And then with the copy of the array, we shuffle it. Um, we then return current frames dot pop so just just remove the last one and return it and then this right here will set the frame um, now if we've done this correctly we should get random frames um, let's go back to this and then now instead of doing frames bracket I I can do message dot frame and same thing here I can do message dot frame so each message has a specific frame associated with it, but when the page loads, each message gets a random frame. And we don't actually don't need the index anymore. Now, does it work? I mean, it, it seems to. <laughs> let's, let's lock it up. OK, so we get one, two, three, three. One, two, two, three. Two, one, four. The fact that I got the indice three twice is probably not good. We'll see you later, Pablo. Thanks for being here. All right, let's see what Alka is doing. So we have an array of length 10. We reduce it, and uh, we splice it, meaning we insert into that array itself and we return it a random index. Add a random index. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What's the runtime? Nominal. <laughs> I mean, so here's the thing. It'll it will appear as if it has worked. So when we load the page, we yeah, we get a random frame every time. We do. Uh, let's see if there are any repeats. I mean, they're, they're, the thing is, they're going to be repeats. I think it's random and not, yeah. Look, like, like there's two frames, one after another, that are the same. That's fine. I think this is random enough. But honestly, honestly, I do. I do. This the, our function is wrong. <laughs> this is wrong. Um, or is it? Is it? Index equals math dot random times frames dot length. Yeah, I mean that just gets a so we we could do this. So instead of doing uh, i plus this, we could just get a random, literally a random index, and swap it, and then uh, we can just do array dot length. Like I think this will technically work where for every value in the array, we swap it with some random uh, place 
in the array, right? So now we have one, two, three, four, five unique ones, and then we should get five unique ones after that. One, two, three, four, five, and then it starts over again. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to go with this. Let it be known that we did not actually implement the algorithm that they told us to, because technically you're supposed to uh, get a random value. Um, yeah, I mean, that's another way to do it, but array sort could be in login. It, it, it really doesn't matter because we're literally we're shuffling an array of length five. I don't know. I think I'm done here. We've, we've written we've written enough code. All we needed to do was shuffle it. I'll give you two seconds to yell at me as to why this is a bad idea. Oh, okay. Doc is saying this doesn't actually give us a random shuffle. <laughs> I mean, it's random enough, right? Right? It's random enough. Lol. All right, I see, I see no people with a strong opinion as to why I shouldn't do this, so we're going to leave it. It's good enough. Randish. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, so uh, at this point, it's great. So now when the, when the page loads, we get, we get random uh, quotes. Happiness is meeting friends. Happiness is being free from anything. Happiness is being happy. Happiness is eating pasta at 2 a.m. Great, so we get random frames and we get random messages. Happiness is being framed. Nice. <laughs> um, great, we're on our way. Let's go back to our, our checklist. So we are now randomizing the frame. Um, I think that I want to do next is to set up the padding for each frame. Um, so that... Um, it, it 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 doesn't overflow on the edges, and the and the way that I have this set up is each frame can have a custom style. So you can see that for the frame one, it has a custom style that sets uh, twenty five vmin of padding on the left and the right, and that causes the the text to appear with within the frame. We just need to figure out for anything that overflows, um, what should the padding be. Um, and this is what we're going to do. Um, we are going to throw in some, instead of the message content, we're gonna throw in some lorem ipsum and see what happens. It's a lot, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot. I mean, the thing is, I, the messages, oh, that, I mean, that looks great. Doesn't that look great? Because this one already has the padding set up for it. Um, but now that we have that, we can get a better idea of what the, the padding should be. And now we should probably just focus on one frame at a time. So let's only do uh, this. We'll only do image two so we can figure out what the padding needs to be for image two. We'll comment these out. Say frames is an array where only image two is an option. And now they're all going to have uh, image two. Great. So we can figure out what should the padding be for this. Um, and I have a feeling it's a whole lot less. So it's going to be similar, but probably only like 5, 10, maybe. I'll just do it manually. Padding left. We'll do 10 vmin. And the same thing for padding right. Let's see what we get. It's honestly pretty good, but now that the text is so long, it actually overlaps with the top and bottom. But I'm going to assume, and actually we can probably set a message limit on the back end. Let's, we'll, we'll, let's, let's add that to the to-do list. Is on the back end, we should not allow messages longer than a certain amount. Um, validate message length. And that way, we don't have to worry about it overlapping with the tops and bottoms. Uh, because if we just do, if we get rid of like this last sentence, it'll probably look pretty good. Look at that. Let's increase it just a little bit more so that it's more padded to the left. Um, yeah, we, we could adjust the font size. The only issue is like that, um, that's hard. 
<laughs> because you would have to render it with the font size, calculate the width, and then adjust accordingly. And this is easy enough that I'm not going to do that. So uh, this looks like a good amount of padding for each one of those fonts that we've chosen. I'm happy with it. All right, let's move on to uh, image number three. Yeah, we, we could flex in, uh, we, we, we already are um, doing a, uh, I guess a vertical centering. Uh, the issue is um, we don't know how much space off from the sides uh, they should be. What's happening here? Image two. All right, now we need to work on image three. Um, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, actually, I think image three is just like another like very rectangular one. Yeah, like this. So you can see that this frame has a has a fatter fatter edge than the other one. So even if we were to flex it, we still need to know how much it needs to be pushed in. Um, okay. The line breaks do, yeah, I don't know if I want to center it. Yeah. Yeah, if you do, uh, and hello, happy Lunix. If you do exclamation mark, exclamation mark what pronouns, uh, you'll get a, a list of pronouns that you can choose from. Okay. Um, I think this is going to be similar, maybe like 20 vmin. Happiness is music. It's too much. Let's go with uh, 16. It's pretty good. I'm happy with that. Like, technically, we could we could text align center it. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. Because it is a little bit, like, left justified. I mean, it is left justified, but... Um... I like it. That's a bit nicer. Happiness is having no linter errors. <laughs> I like it. We're going with it. Okay. Um, and so that's image three. Let's figure it out for image four. We're on our way. I think I'm actually going to stop doing a separate one. I'm just going to comment out the ones that we're not using. So image three goes here. And then uh, we're going to comment out everything except for image four. See what it looks, looks like. All right. What's up, Mary Jo? How's it going? Too much. Uh, let's go with 20. Looks good to me. Yeah, like there's a little bit of overlap here. It's probably because the font size is a little bit too big, but I'm let's limit let's limit the message length even more. Let's get rid of like half of this sentence. Like that. Yeah. This is your maximum message length. Let's see how many characters that is. Sixty sixty characters. Happiness is in 60 characters or less. <laughs> is that okay? Should we should we allow for more? I can also decrease the font size for certain fonts. Let's go like 2.75. Vmin is the minimum uh, unit of either the width or the height. And the reason I'm doing that, that is check this out. Are you ready? Does your page do that? <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's very hard to read here, but at least when you're on mobile, uh, the the text, tech, the font size and the image size, it's all relative to each other, right? And because the the image size is using vmin and the font size is using vmin and the padding is using vmin, um, then uh, it all resizes perfectly and is is uh, aligned in the right way, which is why I'm using that. Yeah, you, you might be right, Mary Jo. Um, how much? How, wait, wait, no. Tweets can be two hundred and forty characters now, though, right? Um, text align justify. That actually, you know what? Let's try it because right now I'm using center. Justify will will make it like a newspaper. 
where it takes up the full width. I don't like it because <laughs> you get a lot of spacing like this. I think I'm okay with centering. Eight V-Men? Right now it's 2.75, Doc. That would be huge. Though we have padding, we have padding on the text itself. That should help. Why did we have that padding? Hmm. Yeah. I, I will say, though, like for most websites, you m probably don't want to use vmin for the text size. You could probably you could do a um, uh, a min calculation in your CSS to say, like, we'll use vmin, but the text size should never go smaller than a certain amount. I'm OK with doing it here because I really do want it to like be completely and totally resizable like that. OK. Yeah, that's that's the that's the next plan, Mr. Ben. Uh, we're gonna add backgrounds and stuff like that. Uh, we're just trying to figure get, get the 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 styling right on the frame itself. Let's see how many characters we're at. Oh no, uh, dot length, one hundred and five. I think that's reasonable. Your happiness messages can be a maximum of uh, one hundred and five length, one hundred and five. And I guess that's the other thing is I don't want to do any text. I don't want to do any ellipses. I want to show the full quote. Happiness is using every single available character. <laughs> okay. I think this is fine um, when the name overlaps like this. Because I don't think it's going to happen that often. All right. We figured that out. We're going to do it. We have one last frame to figure out the padding for. And then I'll show you. It's going to look decent overall. Because overall... I mean, the tricky part is all of this is random. So you get a random frame with a random quote. Um, and technically, for like any given frame, we could also set what the font size should be. But actually, the font size is based on the font. And we're also showing a random font, and the sizes of the font are different. So probably what I would need to do is for any given font, um, set what the maximum font size should be so that it fits within the frame. But I don't feel like doing that. <laughs> we could put the name on a plaque. I'm not opposed to that, but let's figure this one out. Um, what was our number one? Our number 13? Th Probably 13. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Okay, so now, now that we have that, um, I'm going to put the real happiness is quotes in, and then everyone's going to try and break it. Everyone's going to send happiness messages that are uh, longer <laughs> than 105 characters. Well, that's okay. You're actually, we could, you know, so somebody mentioned the ellipses. We could just chop it off after 105 characters, and that would, uh, the messages will still show up, but you only see the first 105 characters. That's what I'm going to do. So uh, right here, when we're messing with the messages, we're setting the frame. But we can also do like the display content is uh, message.content.slice dot dot uh, from 0 to 103 and then put dot 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 on the end. Here we go. Happiness is getting a job. Happiness is a choice. <laughs> Happiness is code working first try. Happiness is getting a perfect drop. Happiness is still cat cuddles. Happiness is explaining happiness in 105 characters or less. Nice job, one light of me. <laughs> Wait, did that did that actually work, Chad? I'm curious. Um, here's the thing, they're totally random now. Happiness is watching Coding Garden Stream. <laughs> Let's see the one from Chad. Happiness is when the message you are trying to send fits within the character limit perfectly within 105 characters. Is this 105 characters? That's 116? Oh. Well? Wait. This is 116? It should have been cut off. Oh! We're not using it. We're not using uh, display content. <laughs> 
We need to. So right now we're showing the original message. We should just we should show, show display content like this. Happiness is when the message you are trying to send fits within the character limit perfectly within one dot dot dot. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so we talked about vman a second ago. So it is the minimum unit of either view, uh, VW or VH. And you might not have seen those. Um, let's see if we can pull it up on Mozilla Developer Network. Dimension. Yeah, so um, VW is a unit that you can use called the view width. And so if you set something to be 100 VW, that will be the width of the viewport. And it is responsive. So if someone resizes the browser uh, window, um, that 100 VW unit will get smaller based on the width of the browser. Uh, VH is very similar, so it's for the view height. Uh, Vmin is the minimum of the, the two of those. And so the reason I'm using that is because some browsers may be a rectangle like this, some browsers may be a rectangle like this. And if I just did it based on width or height, you would get some weird ratios. So by doing Vmin, it chooses the minimum of... Uh, of either. Yeah, and uh, s people have mentioned it. We do definitely need to set up a like an auto scroll. Happiness is understanding how to make a Discord bot plus a React app with the same package JSON. You need a. Are you guys trying to ask me questions through your happiness is quotes? <laughs> but you should look into a mono repo. You probably don't want to share the package JSON, but you could shoot depend. Sh you could share dependent libraries. Um, What's it, what's what's that uh, mono repo thing called? I mean, there's a lot of them. There's one that I've used. Is it Luna? I'm not a robot. That's not my IP address, by the way. I'm on a VPN. Lerna, that's the one. So Lerna is really interesting. Um, it lets you have multiple projects in the same repo. Each of those projects can have their own separate package.json, but Alerna allows you to create libraries that can be shared with those projects and also allows you to pull uh, common dependencies up to the top level. Yeah, uh, Lerna is one. You can also use Yarn workspaces. Yeah, that is a cool gradient. Should we steal it? Let's steal it. Let's steal this gradient and make it the background of our site. Um, here we go, linear gradient. Um, and then we can, we should be able to just set that as the background here of the body. Wow. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Here's the thing though. Uh, we actually want, um, we want the background to look like you're walking down the hall of a museum. So I think I'm gonna find a uh, yeah. We need to change the font color. All right, let's let's check some things off our list first. First of all, now all of the messages uh, f mostly fit within the frame. I think actually they do fit within the frame because we've set a maximum length. Happiness is this stream. Happiness is not sadness. I disagree. We talked about this earlier. Happiness is everything. You can't really have happiness without sadness because then you don't know what happiness is, right? Because you have to be sad to know the feeling when you're happy, right? Right? A do not touch sign, that's funny. <laughs> well, thank you, Belladonna. Thanks for being here. Happiness is coffee. Happiness is watching Coding Garden. Happiness is knowing obscure JavaScript features. Eh, eh. Happiness is still cat cuddles. Happiness is getting a perfect drop. Happiness is React or Vue. Maybe not, I mean, the, the simple thought of trying to choose between them does not make me happy. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay. Let's look at our checklist because we have just uh, set the padding for all the frames. So that's great. We're t I mean, we're not technically validating the message length, but we've taken care of the fact that if someone sends a message too long, we show the ellipses. Yeah. Oh, it's always added, isn't it? You're totally right. Uh, I just thought people were being thoughtful. <laughs> uh, we we kind of just need this. So we'll say... Um, if message.content.length is greater than uh, 105, was that what we settled on? Three, four, five, six, 106. Then do this. Else, 
just set it to the original value. Like that. That should fix it. Yeah. Happiness is a rainbow unicorn. Happiness is weekends. Happiness is meeting friends. Meeting friends? Happiness is doggos. I agree. My dog makes me happy. Happiness is my life. Happiness is object object. <laughs> Happiness is you do all the work and output uh, a totally different one. Like you put work in and then the end result is not what you expected. Yeah, I, I know that's the thing, Alka, but we... The, technically, the text isn't overflowing because it's still within the container. I guess if I figured out the exact vmin dimensions of this inner square, we could get that working. I think that's the main reason I'm not using text overflow. Okay. Happiness is what you... What? BR the make you happiness what you... What? Come on, angst. Calm down. Okay. Um, where's our checklist? Let's get a background image for the museum wall. And we need an image that will <laughs> a fallen hope. I'm curious what that shows up as. Happiness is, happiness is, happiness is. I mean, it looks pretty good, honestly, <laughs> because this one is like centered. Happiness is learning something uh, new. I agree. Ooh, a parallax background. That would definitely do it. Okay, free seamless textures. We need like a, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, like a, a brick wall or something. Let's just search the web for a museum wall. I mean, we could literally just do a gray wall. That's not, um, that would not be a bad thing. We could do red. We could make it look like stone like this. I was thinking of like wood paneling or something. Gray does look pretty cool. I mean, what about this, like, bluish gray? Gray wall with a white spotlight? That would actually be pretty cool, but there's, like, a spotlight right above each each one. Oh, thank you. Uh, Feed Kafru says I have nice hair. Um, all right, let's look at these seamless textured backgrounds. These are pretty good. We can do, we can do an asphalt wall. It's like a... Um, I mean, th what's interesting is we could do so much with these because one of the original ideas I had was you have these quotes on clouds and as the clouds roll by, you see these happiness quotes. Uh, but we could use the same data and build that website. We also, what I just thought of because of the asphalt was we could make it look like graffiti spray painted on asphalt and like you're driving down the road and you just see how these happiness quotes, I don't know. There is no limit, like, and right now we're not doing any sort of pagination. So if this database fills up, that's a thing. Um, though, it is detecting messages in my Twitch chat, and there is a 30-second timeout on Twitch messages, so it'll be a while before it fills up. And we'll see you later, Simon. Thanks for hanging out with us. Happiness is curry and beer on a Saturday. Nice. Nice. You might have sent that one last time, Julia. Um, okay. Okay. A 3JS rotating cube with happiness quotes. What is what is this? This is just a this is just fa you know what? I'm not opposed to this. Um, let me let me save this image. Actually, are these uh what what's the uh, usage? Um, what do you call it? Like, do I need to attribute it? Seamless textures. Mm, free tileable textures. Not for commercial purposes. All right, I'll just link to the image that we download. Uh, but give me a second. I'll download this. We'll make it the background, see what happens. Okay. Wait, the size of this texture is 47 megabytes? Oh, I see. The one that it's showing us is actually a 400 by 400 uh snapshot of it which is actually totally fine let's see yeah oh it may not repeat i may need the original image for it to actually repeat 
Uh, but here we go. This is the image as I downloaded it. Let's try setting it at the ba as the background and see what happens. Greg! What's up, Greg? Thank you for that year, uh, that resub. Uh, how long? Is it a year? It had to have been a year now, right? Right? Yes, 12 months. I appreciate all the support, Greg. Thank you, thank you. Okay, uh, let's try to tile it. It may not be seamless. Uh, we may need to find something else that actually will tile. But here we go. Um, for the body, the background... Uh, image um, should be a URL with uh, go into the assets directory and grab the gray background JPEG image. One year. I mean, that looks pretty seamless to me. Uh, it doesn't look that great, though. Uh, yeah, if, for anyone just joining us, if you do exclamation mark badges, um, there's all the information you need on setting your country flag or your team. Yeah, the texture is not great. I was thinking it was like, you know, a lot of uh, galleries or, showca or showcases have temporary walls that have like that gray fabric on them. Um, and that's what I was thinking this might look like, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like we're in a cubicle. <laughs> Let's find a different one. Well, um, oh, you're right. If we do background, wait, 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 wait. We actually want to set the background image of the thing that's scrolling, and that way it will scroll with it, I believe. Watch. I think. Hmm. Background repeat. <laughs> we'll take a look at that one in a second, Mal. Happiness is not having to worry about overflowing text. Uh, what repeat do I want? I thought it was just repeating by default, which is actually fine. I don't know. Uh, but you're right. We should act, if we add some shadows to the the frame image, background attachment. What is that? Zip. Join. Let's see what join does. Oh no, never mind. <laughs> what is background attachment? Alka? I've never seen that before. Fixed. Basically, I, I want the background to scroll as I scroll, because right now it's just in one place. And I thought that because I set it as the background of uh, this container, and because the container has overflow scroll, it would have went to it. Yeah. Cover the property to read details. Specifies whether the background images are fixed with regard to the viewport or scroll along with the element. Happiness is... <laughs> Doc with the Unif Unicode characters. Happiness is a lovely cup of tea in the morning. Yeah, it's, it's, not, it's not doing... Only the content scroll, not the container itself. So... Do we need to set an element that is 100% width and height, which is fixed position so that it scrolls with the content? Is that what we need? So if I have like, uh, let's just call this uh, background that has a width of 100% and a height of 100%, but this has position the container has, well, is it, con is it the container? Yeah, it's the container. Position uh, relative, and this has position absolute. Will it scroll? <sighs> I 
this is what I'm thinking. So we have uh, messages here, and then right here we put a little div, and we give it a class of background. Well, what if we put it here? Nope. Nope. Uh, width, height. Oh, would we scroll? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, so it, 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 it can't be a... I wanted 100% of all of the children. Not, uh, and yeah, it actually should work. Well, it, at least for the first part. It'll work if I put it in front. I mean, I could make the width like a million pixels. Because technically, look, as I, as I scroll for a second, top left, right, bottom to zero. I think the only thing now is the width needs to be like 10,000% like that. Uh, but the thing is, it'll run out eventually. Yeah, or it goes too far. <laughs> we could technically calculate the width after all the frames have loaded. I don't, I don't, a lot of people are mentioning background repeat. I don't think I need that. All right, let's just remove the width. And now it does that. Here's what I'm going to do. Um, we're going to have a, a width variable in my JavaScript. And then after everything has loaded, we're going to set it to be the, the full width. That's it. Uh, place the messages in the background container? Uh, actually, yeah, that might be a simpler solution. Because technically now this is going to expand to be the width of the co the, f the parent container. But now the background... Well, let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm going to have to probably move some of the... Uh, like this flex stuff. Set the height to 100%? No. 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 Um... Keep the flex on the div above the background. Yeah. Um, but then I, I would need it in it as well. OK, so there's that. But now that the messages are inside of the background, we need to move display flex into the background as well. So that's a thing. There we go. That's a bit more of what we wanted. Um, and then this has a height of 100%. This is what we wanted. Great. Um, though we've got a little extra spacing. Where's that coming from? Hey, what's up, uh, Mara? Yeah, we, we write. We do web dev here. Uh, I mean, we're just struggling with CSS right now. But I think we figured it out. We're gonna we're gonna change the t the back background texture. But at least now it looks like you're moving along and you're actually like looking at the wall. Um, I don't know what has, let's pull up the, the CSS or the element inspector and see, um, so there's the div messages, there's the background, each individual message. Yep. 
Yeah, I don't think that gap was actually doing anything. Um, happiness is having no memory. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I could see it because if you have nothing in the past to worry about and you're kind of just, you're just now existing, you might actually be pretty happy. Um, all right. I think what we do in the parent is overflow y is none. Or overflow, overflow y is hidden. That'll get rid of, uh, or it should get rid of, it doesn't. Um, and then on the background, overflow nah, hidden. Where is that vertical scroll bar coming from? Oh, no, it worked. Yeah, uh, I, we, we thought it wasn't working last time, but gap actually works for display flex. At least a certain amount. So there's like one vmin, two. It's working. Um... Am I zoomed in? Oh, yeah, okay, no, that, now that's 100%. <laughs> the vertical scroll bar could be coming from the horizontal scroll bar. Um, I mean, the body has no margin. We technically could do a full CSS reset, but that might have changed some of the styles that we've already set. Um, like if we do everything has margin zero by default and padding of none and a box sizing of border box. Um, yeah, it does like that. Like our, our name no longer has um, any spacing on it. Well, for now, I'm going to set the, the color to be white, just so you can read the, the happiness quotes. Like that. We're about to, we're, the next step is to change the background inside of each frame. Uh, but happiness is not having to worry about overflowing text kappa. <laughs> um, I don't have a recommended roadmap. I know there is like roadmap.sh. This one? Yeah. There's a few different roadmaps maps that they've created. I mean, I think these are always a good starting point, but the thing is, you can never, like, it would be so hard to create something that is all-inclusive um, because there's this, which asks you, which shows you, like, questions you should be able to answer and then, like, talks about different technologies. But the thing is, any one of these branches could be infinitely deep, and, that, and it doesn't show that. But it's a good place to start. So, hello, Hugo Das. How's it going? I did a fancy M dash before the author's name. How does an M? Is that just a Unicode character? Because um, I did like a triple dash before, but then I got rid of it. Oh, I think the other the other the thing is some of the fonts actually don't support an M dash. Wait, how did that break this one? <laughs> This this one worked earlier when it was in a different frame. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I would say so like uh, for like the roadmap. I mean, technically, I mean, you can you can go as deep as you want. It really depends on like what your job is or what your specialty is. Um, I'm just mentioning that like this is not the full picture is mainly what I'm saying. Like it's a good start and it is a good picture, but it's not the full picture. Yeah, I think I'll add that. Word break all. Or break word. Uh, who who has it? We're going to go with Alka's because that sounds right. <laughs> word break. Break. Let's try break all. The thing is, now that they're random randomized, I lost it. It's from Mal. That does it. <laughs> so uh, uh, thank you, Enfi, for break all. Um, not having to worry about overflowing text, Kappa. 
great. Oh, no worries, Mal. No, I, I know, I know. Uh, you're not. It's not stressful. It's just a fun bug that we need to fix. Um, it works, but now why the heck is this vertical scroll bar there? Why? Why? Um, scroll. Um, what is it? What's the overflow? Hidden? Is it on the messages themselves? No. Oh, here. No. Um, I mean, I have overflow hidden on the background. Oh, you know, we probably need overflow hidden on the body for sure. And we need to update Java. Um, there we go. Ah! Okay, but um, I need to do on the body. It's not everything. Not everything is hidden. Um, overflow Y is hidden. Yeah, there we go. We should be able to go back to the beginning. Hard refresh. Back to the beginning. Happiness is freedom. Happiness is rum and cokes from bringing warm memories. This is why I think we don't do break all. I think we do break word. Is that a thing? Like that. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Though, I don't think that... I think that breaks now... Oh, no, it still works for that. Okay, great. Great. It breaks the word if it can. Otherwise... Um, Happiness is an overflow test. <laughs> oh, you all. That's pretty good. It almost looks like a periodic table of elements. Um, okay. Happiness is learning with coding garden. Nice gravity. Okay. Uh, where, where are we at now? I think this is good. I think we need to pick a better background image. And at this point, we figured out all the styles. All we need to do is just uh, swap out for a different texture. Um, like this one. Why not? Just gonna replace it. That's pretty good, honestly. I like that. I like this. What do you all think of this? Smile in the chat if you like it. Frown in the chat if you don't like it. Yep, it's the one. It's the one. Five. <laughs> Awesome. Side scroll is so hot right now. <laughs> Wait, some people don't like. It. I think honestly, I think it's good enough. I'm going to stick with it because the next part is actually going to be really tricky, putting a background within the frame. And the reason it's going to be tri tricky, yeah, so the I what I want is maybe some different like nature backgrounds or something like that inside of each one. But what's tricky about it is I need it to be behind the frame. And I need the, the text to stay where it is. So that's what we need to figure out next. Happiness is finding a cross-site scripting in Google APIs. It says, uh, wait. Is it not here? Did I spell your name wrong? Oh, it's D-A-E. There it is. That's art. Look at that. That's a tall order. Good luck. All right. Well, we're going to try. <laughs> Use before. The, I guess the... Yeah. Let's figure it out, though. Let's just pick um, one thing that should be the background. I mean, I guess we could technically use, like, one of these textures. Actually, no. Let's find a... Um, don't I have a uh, nature... Images API. I think I created this. What did I call it? Um, a background element in 2M of margin around it. Okay. Um, a garden as a background? Yeah, I think if we find nature images, I think that'll be fine. But uh, when I did the um, 
the front end showdown 2020 i believe i used an image search api that i created nature image api cool you can do this and then do garden and then this actually pulls images from reddit um Japanese maple tree at the Japanese gardens in Portland, Oregon. And then we can look at it. Look at that. Let's just use this one as an example for now. But um, once we get it working, we'll pull random images and um, set them there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let's find another one, though. Uh, Hamilton Gardens in New Zealand. Yeah, like, this, these are great. These these would look wonderful behind behind these. So that's what we'll use. That's um, and that's what this is doing. So this is pulling from r slash uh, earth porn, um, which is it's not pornography. It is pictures uh, like really beautiful pictures of of earth and nature, um, and then um, it's giving you like the first page of results, and you can actually get like the second page of results. Yeah. Okay. Let's put this image behind the frame. How are we gonna do that? I don't know. Um, I think what we might need to do is something like, um, like we'll get a random image, image, and that's going to be the background image property, something like this. But this can be dynamically set, like that, uh, like that. And so, um, well, actually, no, 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 because. Okay, here's how this is working. This is a div which has the background image set to be the frame itself, right? That, this is where it gets tricky. Um, there's a reason I can't just use z-index. Oh, maybe I'll show you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to overflow. So, um, yeah, so we have this div, and we have the background image, which is the frame itself. Now, if we want the... Um, this this image that I just chose to be behind that, um, we need like a separate element. I think uh, Dorendor is mentioning border image. What is border image? A div before and then a background image on that. So we can do quote. Let's look at quote um, because quote is what we're setting the background image on. A mask image, whatever it is, it's going to be tricky. So if we say quote before, like that, no, before, let's backdrop, and we set the background image here, what does this do? Nothing. Let's see uh, if it's actually rendering. Um... So we have quote, uh, content, nothing is what Mark is suggesting. Before? Ah, okay. Probably need some width. Yep, <laughs> it needs some width, um, and it needs technically it needs width and height, and then or actually okay. So if if we don't do width and height, if we just do display block, Let's see what that does. That didn't do it. So it needs width and height. Um, but then what we need is we need background like fit or background size uh, contain. And so that will put the whole image. Yeah. And then um, we don't want it to repeat. It's none or no repeat.
And William Cameron, thank you for the resub, who says, thanks for making awesome content. Well, thank you for being here. Um, how long? How long has it been? Ten months! Very much appreciated. Um, okay, so... <laughs> We have our we have our before element. Um, I guess how could okay. This is the before element. If we oversize it a little bit, like if we do 150% and a height of 150%, that's that's mainly what I want because the, the main thing is we're gonna have random images, right? And we need them to fit uh behind the frame. Uh position absolute. Oh, with like transform. Okay. Well, we do need the width and the height. Um, what if we go one ten? The main thing I'm worried about is like, I mean, is on is like this. So if if we're at a hundred percent, um, then you can see that the the image is a little bit. Uh, it's not as wide as the frame opening. Um, okay. So what happens if we set position absolute? What are you all saying with that? Background size cover. That's probably okay. Um, I guess the main issue is we kind of need it to be the size of the frame. I need the text to be on top of the before. Clip path. The only issue is we need a clip, uh, a unique clip path for every single image. Um, also, uh, for those of you that suggested doing this, um, oh yeah, background, we can do that. Background position center. So that's fine. But those of you that suggested doing this, how do we get it behind the text, right? Because uh, the quote element is the one that has the frame as its background image. And then we're setting this before element with the background image. I mean, will Z index do it? Negative 100? Yeah. Um, so if I, if I set this to a Z index of 1, and then, well, it, it's not it's not Z index though because it's the it's literally the same element, right? Set the before on the frame, not the quote. So what you're saying is because right now in Milos or Milos, thank you for that eight month. Resub. Happiness is an eight month sub anniversary. Thank you very much. That makes me happy. Okay, so right now the um, the frame is being set as the background image on the quote. What you're telling me is I should be doing it on the before. That's going to be really hard with a computed style. Um, so I am going to. I appreciate all of your suggestions, but I am now going to stop listening to the chat, and I'm going to just make it work and we'll be done with it. So I'm not gonna use a before element. I'm going to use a relatively positioned element inside of the container, or I guess like right right beside the container. Um, like this, make it work, I'm gonna make it work. So <laughs> we'll have this uh, div uh, classes, well I, don't even, I won't even provide a class, but it really, um, I need this to have an image inside of it. But we know better. I mean, you probably, you don't know the full picture because like last time we did a lot of work to get it so that the text displays exactly within the frame, but that was at a cost because before I wasn't using the frame as a background image. It was a separate element, but now it is. I don't know. I don't know. But we can put the image here and that is just going to throw everything off. But let's call this, a, uh, we'll call this, uh, message background um, and message background appears within a message it'll have a width of 100% and a height of 100% 
uh, and the image inside of it will have a width of 100%. That. Okay, so we see the message. We see the quote, and then we see the message background, which is appearing below, below the page. You can see when I highlight it, it's below the page. So if we absolutely position this element, um, position, absolute, uh, top, zero, left, zero. That puts it there. Um, <laughs> um, that's great. We could center it, I guess. I mean, if the because the image is inside of it, if I do display flex and then justify content center, the image, well, that does that does that too. <laughs> Why does it do that with Flexbox? I don't know. But the other thing that I want is, um, I guess the the quote has to have like overflow none. Let's look at the message element. Yeah. So the message element is taking up the entire height. And then the quote is the intersection. Um, yeah, message do, well, message already has position relative. Yeah, so the, the fact that I'm nest, nesting CSS here, this is actually SAS, SCSS. Um, what if what if I do like some vmins here? Like uh width 40 me vmin height 40 vmin something like this. And then I don't do position absolute. I just set it to be a flex box and then it's centered. How about this? Uh well, I well but height is 100%. Okay. What if I create an image container <laughs> inside of this background div? Um, that has a width and a height of 100% of that container. I'm just going to keep adding containers until it all works, but give me, we're going to figure this out. Uh, and then inside of that, that has an image with, um, with hundred percent height auto. Okay. But now we need an image container to put the image in. So stacking divs. So we need a div. We're going to put the image inside of that and we're going to give this a class of image container. All right. Beautiful. So if you look at the message background, um, it is taking up 100% of the height. I mean, I guess technically I do want it, I do want that container to take up 100% of the width as well, and then I'll just modify the image container inside of that. 100%. Great. Um, and then I don't even want position absolute. I think we're going to flex this thing. No, I do want position absolute. So that way it appears at the top left. That's the main reason that we're doing that. Cool. Um, whoa, uh, align item center. Okay, we're almost there. So um, we have a message, which has a message background I mean, at least right now, I, could, I I know for sure if I do the Z index here as like negative one, um, well, let's do Z index as uh, one, and then the Z index of the quote is two, and it should appear on top of it. Why is this complaining? Z index has no effect on this element since it is a positioned element. Try setting a position properties to something other than static. What? I've literally never heard of that. Does it? 
I can't do position absolute because we're relying on flex box of the container. Position relative. Hello, code phobia. How's it going? We have position relative on the parent. Um, yeah, I guess if, if I set it position relative on it itself. Hey, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> and shout out to Code Phobia. I haven't, I haven't tuned into your stream in a long time. Hopefully you're doing well over there. Definitely check them out. Um, Mary Jo was in here earlier too. Uh, shout out to her. I haven't tuned into her stream in a long time. Check them out. Anybody else? <laughs> that's, that's streams. Check them out. Okay, we're on our way though. Because do you see this? Do you see this? The image is appearing behind the frame. Which is a good start. This is a very good start. Now we just now we really just need to um, clip the image so that it does not protrude from outside of the frame, right? And then I'm not, I'm not worried about the entire image displaying because even even this small section of the image is totally fine. Um, but what if, what if instead of um, what if we adjust the percentages of the image container? Yeah, something like this. So what if we get it to where it's at least the width and then we can adjust the height from there? Do I not need the height? 60%. 80%. Yeah. I think 80% has coverage on... Yeah, no, no, yeah. We're gonna need to adjust the the font display next. Yeah, and that's that's the plan. Is for each frame, we can set what the uh, width and height should be. Um, and then the image container could have a height of like sixty percent and overflow hidden. And that way, like that. Right, and then we can just we can set what the overflow should be for every image. Um, Forty. I mean, if we could find a universal one, that'd be great. Look at that. No, it doesn't work for that. See, it doesn't work for this frame. Uh, happiness is weird. <laughs> yeah, and so like with seventy percent, it protrudes. So each frame is going to have its own width and height setting. I think that's what we got to do. So every frame has the, the inner image width and height setting. And uh, it should be fine. Should be fine. All right. Um, we need to make this text readable. Readable. So um, on the quote, we could set, I was thinking we set like a transparent background on top of it. Um, let's call this the darkness overlay. We, I've, we've, I've messed with text shadow before. Um, there's also like a text, um, keep adding dropped shadow until it's readable. Here's what I was thinking. We have a darkness overlay. This gets overlaid inside of the container on top of the image that just has a, uh, a background that's an RGBA. And by making it darker, it makes it uh, readable. Um, and so the darkness overlay has a width of 100% and a height of 100% of the parent. Yeah, that's the one, text stroke. Well, uh, let me try that really quick. Um, two pixels black. Is that, is that it? WebKit text stroke. I guess we need both. That's too much. We could, we could do like a half a pixel. We actually need vmin though. Um, 
so that it works at all screen sizes. It's kind of horrible. 0. 0.05. It just makes it really, really not that readable, which is why I just want to set the background thing. Okay. Ew. Ew. <laughs> All right, so this darkness overlay, we need to just um, position it on top of, or uh, yeah, it needs to be on top of the image. So position relative. We could add a filter to the image too. Yeah. Um, let's do that. But this has a position of absolute and then we need the darkness overlay on top of the image so we will put the darkness overlay right here like that ta-da ha ah, i'm so hyped to visit the happiness museum <laughs> all right we'll get we'll give you a, a quick tour um happiness is shrug emote happiness is having no linter errors i think honestly i think this is fine um we could do something like a, a filter on the image so um filter blur does this take uh degrees does it take pixel units Pixels. Do we want to? What, what could be a, a filter that we want to apply? Actually, I guess somebody mentioned brightness earlier. If we just decrease the brightness, then we actually don't even need um, the background overlay. Yeah. Yeah, the brightness does it. Right. So that's without the brightness. But if we make everything half, then uh, it should be visible. Okay. So here's what we're going to do we're going to make a request here get a random image and then we'll put that yeah the blur well, we can add blur can you can you compound these yeah then we don't need the darkness overlay but actually i think we i think we do need the darkness overlay because not all images have the same brightness and so this will be a consistent overlay on them we'll do 1 pixels of blur Cool. All right. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to call uh, the API that I just copied here, um, which will give us 20 random images, uh, 24. We could get more if we wanted to, but for now, this is good. We'll pick random ones. We'll set it as the background and uh, see how it looks. And then if it looks great, we're, we're going to set the percentage for each individual frame. So that way we have no over overflow. 25. Yeah, 25 because it's zero indexed. That this would be great, uh, Doc, because these cinema graphs are awesome. But they don't. I mean, they do have an API. But yeah, these would be like moving images, which are pretty dope. Next time, we'll add that as a like a, a new feature to add. Let's put it on the README. Um, use cinema graphs as the background. Okay. And uh, see you later, uh, Mathematic. Thanks for hanging out with us. Getting the kids code. Gotta teach these kids. Okay. Um, let's call the API. So when the page loads, we're going to call that API to get a bunch of random images. Um, so this, this gets the messages. We need something else to get the images. gonna be similar um, I'm just thinking do I want to set the image per message or do we just display it randomly above we'll see let's just do it separately for now so call that and search for garden and then when we get back the response um, we'll parse it And we have a property called images that is an array. So let's just grab the images off of that. 
and then uh, we'll set set the images. I mean, I think really what I want is just uh, an array here um, that we set. And so here we'll say images equals API images. Um, actually, I think I could do this, let images. Or no, no, I can do this. This will override images with the value from the API. That's weird, isn't it? So uh, predefine images as an empty array and then call the API and overwrite those that empty array with the array that we get back from the API. Now we have another function, um, get random image. And this just returns, um, and actually we want to, we, we do want to shuffle it though. So we'll do, uh, we, we wrote this function earlier. We'll do an in place shuffle of the images like that. And then when you get a random image, we'll return images.pop. Um, and if, um, well, this can't be async. Ugh. If, Let's do this. All images and random images are two sep totally separate things. No, random images is totally separate. So, um, no, no. Okay, I'll, I'll explain what's happening after I get it after I get it working. Why is caps lock on? Okay, here we go. So, um, we'll say random images equals images dot slice like this, and then we'll shuffle it. Cool, and that doesn't in place shuffle. Okay, we're almost there. <laughs> random images and predictable images. So images is the array that we get back from the API, which is in mostly a specific order. Um, then when we want to get a random image, we'll just grab the latest one uh, from the array of random images. But if random images, random images dot length is empty, then that means we need to do it again. We need to recopy the array and randomize them. That's it. That's the winner. Okay, so now... Um, now that we have a random image or we have a way of getting a random image, we can expose it in the template. So inside of our template, we're going to get a random image to, to display behind each frame. Um, and when the page loads, we'll say get images like that. All right. Moment of truth. Now, instead of hard coding this image right here, all we have to do is call that function, which will give us back a random image. Are you ready? Broken. <laughs> oh, I, I know why. Because the, the API returns an object, and we need to say get random image dot image. Um, and if the array was empty, We return an empty object. Okay, it's gonna work. Are you ready? It didn't work. <laughs> Let's look at the element. So we have our message background, the image container. It's it's totally empty. Uh, we can look at the view dev tools. Hopefully, we can look at our app. Get random image is a function. Let's just log those uh, images for now, make sure that we're actually getting them. Well, so technically get images runs in the background, which will in turn set that, oh, you know what? Yeah, you're, I think you're totally right. Cause we actually need to make sure that we have them before they render. Yeah, that's probably what it is. So instead of calling it all in load, I'll call it with within git messages so that way they, that they actually exist. Look at that. I mean, half of it stopped loading. 
<laughs> but we're getting some nature images. Oh no, you know what? You know what? Um, the image loaded. It's just, it's not as tall as the one that we were looking at before. So it actually um, doesn't appear within the frame. Can I zoom out the editor view? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that because it is gigantic. I don't know why Java keeps trying to update. Somebody could be hacking me. And when they see that pop up, they know that it worked. It works with that image because that's the one we tested it with. Um, all right. We need some adjustments here. The thing is, we're not using background image anymore. I'll show you how we're doing it. So we have just this image element. And really, the image container um, is what's doing it. If I change the height, that moves it down like that. Um, but for like skinny images like this, I mean, I guess. This is really tricky when you have different aspect ratios. This looks great. Look at that. Happiness is how do I make a CRUD API, <laughs> says Chief Mustard. <laughs> Happiness is using bootstrap so you don't have to write CSS. Happiness is when you do not exceed the character limit of 105 characters, but just get it exactly right. Woot. Nice, Simon. Um, yeah, this is... This is this is a thing. Set the image container to the correct size, give the image 100% width and height, and then object fit cover. Yeah. I think I think that's this is this is the point where for every frame we set what the width and the height should be. I think that's what we do. So we uh, here's let's uh, let's do it again. So for um, but no, then it changes based on the image dimension. We'll, we'll figure it out. So for if everything is just using the first image, we could probably add another property that's like uh, background style, and then this can set the width and the height. So like width, uh, what do we have it as? Eighty percent, and then it can set with what it needs the height to be. Um, we'll get there. So this is like that, and then height is um, we'll we'll default to sixty percent for now. And then what we do is on the image container, we use the message frame to define what the background style should be. So um, right, because is image container the one? that has the width and the height, it is. So image container, we're going to set the style to be uh, message.frame.background style. Like that. And then we don't hard code the width and the height here. OK. So uh, now we have a bunch of different images. And we need to figure out uh, what, I guess, what the width should be. I mean, really, really. Because this is kind of working. We just need to chop off the sides, at least with this image. And then for like one of them, it's not like this one is not actually tall enough. So. Um, we should set the height to um, 65%. What's breaking? Can't access property frame. Context of messages is undefined. What did I just do?
I think that I think we're on the right track. So once I get this working, to get the images, the sides chopped off, we can use object fit, I think. Um, but I have just broken something horribly. Um, this is saying message.frame.background style is not a thing. Um, can't access property frame. Context.messages is undefined. I I wholeheartedly disagree because uh, state gets returned here. State.messages is defined here. Um, and then here, oh, I see. Wait, no. Well, no, uh, frame is a property that I'm setting on the individual message because uh, that sets what the what frame to display for each message. And then um, for each mes message, we're setting what the background style should be based on that frame. So, but frames is used um, here where we set the frame. Messages.frames, is that what I have? Oh, you're totally right. <laughs> Wait, how did that get added though? Yeah, you're, that was it. I, yeah, yeah, that's the one. Okay. Now, um, now that we have that, we should probably use vmin for the height. Like, uh, I mean, I think it's kind of, I think it's technically the same thing because of where this is appearing, but height 60 vmin. Okay. And then now does it appear within each, this is why, why is this? Okay. <laughs> It didn't work when we get to longer images or, uh, yeah, like wide, but not, um, oh, it's cause we're still defining the width. Yeah. Okay. We don't want a hundred V men. Um, Well, it's not a ba I think the issue is it's not a background image. I guess technically that could work though. If we if we can get this inner div within the frame. Um Let's just get the div within the frame. Like like that. Yeah. I think I think that's the way to go. So now that the div is within the frame and hey, uh Jesu. Jesu it? <laughs> Thank you for that prime sub. Uh, yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah, you're, you're all totally right. Now that this is within, we can just use background image uh, cover. Yeah, that's totally it. And, but we still need the background style for each frame to define how what that container size should be. That's totally it. Um, but, yeah, now there's no... Uh, can you do a background filter blur? Um... That's okay. I mean, actually, this doesn't need... And after we do this, um, uh, position absolute doesn't need to be there because this darkness overlay is just... It's just here. But now, now, my friends, is where we set the background image right here. Uh, background image is URL parentheses, single quotes, get random image dot image. Um, so that sets the background image and then we can set the background style. And we can actually set that in just the image container. So the background um, size is cover, repeat, a uh, background repeat is uh, no repeat. And then background position is center. This is the one. We've done it. Look at this. Look at this.
Yes! Happiness is breaking the styling with no spaces. I hope this works. Extra characters to get up to 105. Thank you, Nate. <laughs> happiness is... Mm. Um, happiness is getting a GPU right now. Know what you mean. Happiness is impossible. Happiness is done. <laughs> Yeah, so this is great. This is exactly what we wanted. I appreciate you all. Wait, 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 wait. Did we just find one that didn't work? No, no, the image was loading. It's fine. It's fine. This is great. This is it. Uh, now we just need to define that width and height for every other frame. Can we? Can the picture be modified to look more like a painting? Possibly. I. Uh, ex experience. Experience. Thank you for that resub. Who says amazing? Uh, two month resub. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, now we need the width and the height for all the other frames and we're good. Uh, and the fingers, thank you for the bits, uh, presented your vanilla spa as a college project. Got a 10. A. <laughs> nice. Hopefully you added a little bit of your own code to it. Uh, but well, that's good to hear. Yeah, uh, cause now when, if I do, uh, maybe I could do this here, filter blur. That'll still, like if I do filter blur on the container, yeah, it still blurs the background. So if there was a filter that stylized it to look like a painting, um, that would be cool. Uh, let's do CSS filter. Uh, I know there's a, there, there's like a, a filter a lot of people use to make things look like a comic book. Maybe that's something we could use. And I am Dust Wolf. Thank you for the bits. Hype train. There's a hype train. Nice. Great work, everyone. Um, let's just look at CSS filters. Will this show us examples? Grayscale, saturate. Um... Here's the filter edi editor. This is like color filters. Does anyone know what I'm talking about though? Like the, the comic book filter or whatever it's called? Uh, look like painting. <laughs> I'm good at searching the web. Um, oil painting feature. Uh, okay, CSS brush stroke filter. Half tones. Mm. Thirteen insanely useful CSS filter effects you can use now. Yeah, so that changes the brightness, contrast. We're doing blur. I think we do need a drop shadow. We want a drop shadow on our frame. Let's add that. That should be easy to add really quick. I think. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> because uh, I think, is it the quote? Yeah, we're setting the quote. Let's let's see. Um Well, um, that just made it pop. I think I believe that actually added background. Like it looks like it, there's the, there's a shadow. Oh no no no! It worked. It worked because there's shadow. Look, there's shadow along the edge. Well, along the right edge anyway. And it looks like there's shadow on the inside too. Like here, something happened. It's definitely different than not having it. <laughs> right. If I get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's adding it inside the frame and on the edges. That's sexy. <laughs> Look at that. That is... Yeah. Wow. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, it's because it's PNG and it's in its uh, different inside of there. That's a happy little accident. Okay, let's let's keep moving. I got I got sidetracked. But the, the next thing... What we need to do now is we need to figure out the background style of every other frame. And then we're golden. And then we put it on the internet... Anybody can go read about what happiness is, and we are done. Um, oh no, we just want to test out image number two, which is the other frame. 
So that's this frame. And so now we should adjust the height here to be way less, 60. 50. Look at that. Happiness is being stress-free from Limeout. Happiness is sleeping well. Happiness is being free from anything. Happiness is worldwide peace. <laughs> Happiness is object, object. This is great. All right, moving, moving right along. Uh, we're going to go to image number three. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Julian. Uh, Julian says, wow, this got good while I was eating dinner. Yeah, uh, right, what we're doing now is we're adjusting what the background size should be for each of the frames. I mean, and, uh, apparently that sizing works for this one. We could probably decrease the height a little bit, though, because the frame is uh, fatter. Yeah, that, I mean, that makes the background even a little more visible. Let's try 30. That's too much, or too little. Yeah. That's that, that's that first tree that we saw when we were testing things out. Happiness is done. <laughs> 35? I think, yeah, let's try 35. Because there was a little bit. Yeah. Oh, what's up, Chris Griffin? Thank you for being here. Cool. All right, we got uh, two more frames to set up. And then we're viable. Then we can uh, uh, get funding, form a company, make money. All right, we'll increase the height here. It's pretty good. This looks so great with the with the shadows. Happiness is dealing with Unicode. Why, 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 why? Happiness is CJ's shell setup. What's up, uh, Gulshav? Happiness is elusive, says Titanfuss. Happiness is happy little clouds. I think we've done a great job, everyone. I think we really have. Like, this looks really cool. Um... We mentioned earlier we wanted to do like a parallax background. I'm not exactly sure how we would do that here though. Um, and then that apparently, and that works too, all right. Happiness is framing your perspective. How relevant. All right, now, when the page loads, we get random images, we get random fonts, we get random frames, and we use all of the messages that you've sent to uh, put them into frames. Happiness is unexpectedly finding Coding Garden on a Saturday, yeah. Happiness is enjoying what you do. Happiness is having less technical debt. Uh, what was the one that Chris said? Framing your perspective. Let's find it. Yeah, <laughs> look at this. It's beautiful. Happiness is framing your perspective. Though, I think we noticed a small bug with this frame. It looks like the image is a little bit too far down. But that's okay. It's natural. The, the, the canvas shifted within the frame while it was hanging on the wall. On the wall. <laughs> I think that'd be too funny, Doc. Uh, I think we can. We should just add like a little auto scroll, and we can kind of at least with this version of it, we're pretty much done. At least to put it on the internet. Though I do want to. Oh, maybe never mind. Because what I thought I would do is I would add a little bit of random margin on top and bottom, so that way the frames are a little bit. Uh, offset but that would totally break our uh, our background i guess if we set the, set it on the background that would work too doesn't matter i think we're good i think we're good yeah i think i would like that because right now to scroll this i actually have to hold down shift happiness is coding garden <laughs> happiness is using every single available character um, oh yeah, we do need, let's see how easy it would be to add us like a spotlight. CSS, um, like light spotlight. I don't know. I don't want to just say CSS spotlight. Cause then yeah, spotlight effect. Let's look at the example. Eh, not quite. We can't, we, what I'm imagining is we have just like a, a light. It looks like a light is shining right here. 
Happiness is when everyone realizes it's your birthday. Is it your birthday? I'm Das Wolf. <laughs> yeah, we could like slightly tilt them because it is hanging on a wall. Well, happy birthday, I'm Das Wolf. If you remind me, I will sing you happy birthday if you're still here in like 10 or 15 minutes. All right. I'm not going to add the spotlight, but we can do that later. Um, so what have we done today? We added the background. That was good. We added the background image for the wall. Um, there's a little bit of space. There's, I think there's enough spacing between frames. Um, and we have some ideas for next time. Uh, some other stuff was um, show a spotlight above the frame. Use a drop, about a drop shadow, but above for the light. Maybe, because right now we have we have the drop shadow. Um, I just copy and pasted this, but this is setting it like on the right edge. But if there's a lot of drop shadow on the top portion too, that would look like a light is shining at it. But yeah, uh, it's on the to-do list if somebody wants to add it. Um, right now, we're not automatically showing the latest messages. I don't even know if I want to do that, honestly. If you refresh the page, the latest messages will show up. Um, I think one thing I do want to do, yeah, scroll wheel direction. How does that work? Can we do it with CSS? Set a mouse wheel to horizontal scroll. Yeah, that's what I'm doing is I'm holding down shift. Rotate the container by 90 degrees, then rotate its child element by 90 degrees. <laughs> well, I have a feeling that's going to mess up a lot of our other styles. I'm not going to do that. Um, pure CSS, horizontal scrolling. It would be nice if you could do something like this. This isn't real. Um, all right, another use. Uh, a non-JavaScript way. Set up the container... Now the children, rotate the container, rotate the children. That's their conclusion, is to do that. I have not paginated the database results, no. Do I have it in my to-do? We'll add it. Okay. This is good enough for now. Um, just know that when you're scrolling, you have to, if you want to use the mouse wheel, you have to hold down shift, and then that will scroll. Um, or you can click and drag. Uh, I'm using Postgres. So yeah, now comes the hard part. Now we're going to put this on the internet. Let's see how long it takes me to put this on the internet so that anybody can go to it. Um, yeah, so pagination, yeah, that would actually be awesome. Um, because that way when you get to the right, it detects that you've gotten to the right and it requests more. Yeah. Uh, there's no, there's no major filtering right now. Uh, it's just really just auto mod because it does have to go through Twitch chat. Yeah, I'll share the API that I'm using. It's a, it's actually, these, these images are being pulled from Reddit, but I, I created an API that, uh, specifically searches across, uh, r slash earth porn to get images of uh, nature. Uh, and you can pass in any query string. But it's really just a wrapper on the, the Reddit API. All right, here we go. Let's take bets on how long it's gonna take me to deploy this. Um, we're gonna do a prediction. All right. Uh, it doesn't lazy load right now, no. Um, will CJ be able to deploy this in a usable state in under 30 minutes? Uh, no, I, I think I can do it in 15. You might have, Pablo. <laughs> Oh, so, oh, no, no, no. Uh, well, uh, I thought you said the notification. Uh, we are using connects, which actually automatically escapes the uh, the inputs. 
um, so that we're not vulnerable to SQL injection. Yeah. I know it has to be 45. Uh, I'll just say deploy in under 15 minutes. If you think I can, you can wager. Yes. If you think it's going to take me longer than 15 minutes, you can wager no. But basically what we need to do is we need to procure a database in the cloud. Uh, in the cloud, we need to procure a server that this will run on. We need to get all of our environment variables set up. And we need a, a URL that I can share with you all that you can click on and see the latest messages. Uh, there is no timer. I mean, we'll start it whenever I start. But though, basically, you can wager with your with your seedlings, your your channel points. Thirty minutes. No, I, I'm going to try to do it in under fifteen. And I'm going to use Heroku. And now it's going to be deployed separately. Yeah. All right. So what you can do is you can use your channel points. Basically, they're points that you get for watching the show. Um, but you can give however much you want. If you think I can do it, you just give however much you want for yes. If you think I can't do it, you give however much you want for no. And depending on the outcome, um, you will potentially double your money or more. I think it's based on the ratios of who is, who's like it's over and under. But you all decide. You have 30 seconds to decide yes or no. So... Basically, if you believe in me, vote yes. If you don't believe in me, vote no. And you honestly, 15 minutes, it's like it's a it's a stretch for 15 minutes because there's a lot involved, right? <laughs> You're spending all 50k, says Greg. I mean, some of you could like really, really up your points right now. If you if you guess correctly. But I will say, I'm gonna do my best. I want it to be under 15 minutes. I'm not gonna sabotage it or anything like that. All right, submissions have been closed. We have 15,000 seedlings in, in uh, thinking I can do it and 95,000 seedlings that think I can't do it. Here we go. Let's set a timer. Um, and here we go. And I'm, I am going to use Heroku. So I'm going to, um, I'm just going to hide my screen for a second so I can log into Heroku. Um, And then I'll show you my screen. But it, the timer is still happening. I got, thank you, Freak Zombie. Um, I'm going to have to remember my pat. Does this count? Does this remembering my password count? I, I, I guess it does. <laughs> oh, goodness. Totally counts. <laughs> Oh man, I have to re. How long has it been since I logged into Heroku? I have to re up the terms of service. Goodness me. Okay. Well, we're in. Okay, I need a new app. I'm just going to call it Happiness. Happiness is? Is that how you spell happiness? Somebody took this. Who took this? Happiness.herokuapp.com? Actually, I, should, I mean, it could be something completely inappropriate. <laughs> Let me hide my screen for a second. But somebody took this took this domain. The timer is started. Yeah, there's 13 minutes and 41 seconds left. Well, Peter Kim has created this website, Happiness Is. So that means I can't have, <laughs> have the domain. <laughs> Stop wasting time. Okay, you're right. Um, let's just call it uh, Twitch Happiness Is. That shouldn't be taken. There we go. All right. We're going to create our app. Um, we are going to uh, add a resource. So we need to add a, a Heroku database to this thing. Heroku Postgres. Hobby dev free. Uh, there we go. So we have the database. It should be attached. Uh, now we need this Heroku remote. So we'll add it to our back end. Um, let me close all of this. But yeah, the timer's counting down. We have 12 minutes and 52 seconds. Let me hide my screen. And I'm going to add the Heroku remote and then deploy the back end. Easy. Um, and it's it's events. Thank you for the bits. I bet the timer stopped. No, it's not. I will show you. The timer is happening. I could technically put it as a, uh, an overlay, but 
12 minutes, 32 seconds. Keep to look, it's, it is currently 1300 hours and 33 minutes. You'll know that in, in 12 minutes from that time is when I should be done. Okay. Um, oh, now this is tricky because Heroku likes your package.json to be in the root, but I actually have a Git repo that is both of these. I don't know, we'll figure it out. I'm actually going to Git init inside of the API folder. Yeah, okay. Um, and then add everything. Yeah, it's not adding our um, node module, so that's good. And then uh, we'll do this, Heroku deploy. Okay, and then we need to add the Heroku remote. It's the second stream I've been in. Oh, welcome, welcome. And then uh, we need to take a look at our .env. There shouldn't be any, yeah, there's nothing secret in here. I just need to make sure that these variables are set on Heroku. Um, so I'm gonna do that now, but you won't be able to see the screen because uh, it's secret. I don't want you knowing the database password and such. So here we go. Um, we need the node env, which will be set to production. I think it's set to production, but to, by default anyways, but that's fine. Uh, we need the Twitch channel name, which is Coding Garden. Secrets don't make friends. Well, secrets prevent you from getting direct access to my database. So uh, we need debug Twitch, which defaults to false. Yeah, the doggo can see my screen. Uh, we need the Postgres port, which should be 5432. And then comes all of the extra stuff, which is the... Um... Yeah, it is 5432, but then we have the uh, database... Uh, Postgres underscore DB, which is the name of the database. Uh, the, f the Fengus, thank you for the bits. Not to distract. <laughs> uh, we have our Postgres user, which I'm setting here. And then we have our Postgres password, which I'm setting here. And we need our Postgres host, which is uh, somewhere on AWS. But uh, Heroku sets that all up for us. Okay, so there's that. Oh, you know, I bet I'm going to run into an issue with SSL because Heroku uses, I believe, like a self-signed certificate on the database. We'll see. Okay, so I've added the config vars. Uh, now I will push it up, so I'll show you. Um, and to do that, I just need to push up to this Heroku remote. Are you all, are you all doing drops to distract me? Git push origin master. So this is, wait. <sighs> the Fengus, thank you for more bits. Um, no, we have eight minutes and 58 seconds left. But locally, I'm actually logged in with this user account and not my personal one. So let me do that. <laughs> Lots of issues. Okay. Uh, open the browser. Here we go. It'll show when I when I switch back to the scene, any drops will will show up. Okay. Okay. Now we're gonna try again. So the way Heroku works is with Git remotes. So because I set up a Git repository inside of the API folder, oh good, a great job, Chad. Um, it is now when I when I just push this up, it's taking that API folder and pushing it up to Heroku because I created a Git repository for the API folder. Yeah, I think I do think I have to add that uh, main roamer player. I've had, I had that, I've had that issue at work recently and uh, that was what I needed to add. So I'm just I'm just gonna add it because it's probably broken. Um, but technically if we go to or if I go to well, actually no, um, I, w I need to run the migrations to get the database tables created. But before I do that, I actually am going to add this code because I, I do think I need it. Um, mainly because 
the um where is it the connects file uh like i said Hiro the heroku postgres uses a self-signed certificate um so connection is going to be the existing connection but also you have to add this ssl reject unauthorized false i know that i need this how much time do i have <laughs> i have seven minutes seven minutes left um Update DB connection. All right, so we'll push it up again. So that'll fix the database connection. And then I'm going to connect, run the migration so that it'll create the messages table. Um, and that should be it, I think. And then our API should be listening. <laughs> no, the website has, it has to be working. You all have to be able to go there, see the things on the page. Yeah. But... Honestly, we can deploy the front end in like a minute flat. So if this works, we're golden. Um, okay, so uh, one interesting thing you can do is um, Heroku run bash. And so what this will do is this this will drop you into a bash shell on your, your Heroku dyno, which is like a little thing that spins up. But that will let us run the, the migrations. Um, so if I do npm run, or no, if I do npx connects migrate latest that should oh no that's an issue um i mean that's an issue with my environment variable take longer than 15 minutes for my viewers <laughs> okay let me just make sure that what it just showed um okay that's the username that's the user okay no no, no. It, it revealed some things <laughs> but that's the username. It's not the password. Um, that's why. Yeah, my Postgres host uh, has the wrong value completely. I didn't expose anything. And even if I did, I could just delete that database and create a new one. Um, but I need to make sure that this environment variable is set correctly. EC2-52. It wasn't the username. I'll, I'll show you. I mean, I don't know why I have to prove this to you, but uh, this right here, BBC, BWLRV, EHM, JP, this is actually the database username. And then after that is the host. I just copy him. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait. I, I'll just, I can delete. Okay. It's, it doesn't show the full password anyways. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> no, it doesn't show the full password. I didn't. I didn't, I'm not going to get pwned. Actually, I'll give you $5 if you can, if you can connect to this database and drop, drop the tables. Actually, I shouldn't, I shouldn't release those kinds of challenges. You didn't see the password. The password is really long. Okay. Now I've updated the host URL. Should be fine. Should be fine. And now, <laughs> now we should be able to. Okay, well, I need to uh, get out of here and then go back in um, and try it again. So nice and helping all of it. We have, we have three minutes. We've got this. Easy. Please don't brute, brute force. I mean, honestly, you're really, I mean, I don't. It's a Heroku dino. You're not hurting anyone except for Heroku, I guess. Um, npm um, connects migrate latest. Here we go. Yes! All right, we have a table. We have a table, table in our database. I tell you what. Um, and now it should be listening. Um, I'm going to hide my screen because this will show IP addresses of anyone trying to access it. Laugh at this bit donation for three minutes. Um, yeah, it's up. Database is up. So, uh, Twitch happiness is .herokuapp.com slash API slash v1 slash messages. Um, happiness is working, says Banana Crazy. And would you look at that? We have ourselves an API response <laughs> that says happiness is working. 
Uh, so any any happiness is messages that you send in the chat will actually are getting put into this database. Happiness is small wins. I don't see that one. Did you smell happiness right? Well, no, we have to deploy the client, but I'm sure I can do that in like a minute or less. Um, oh, there we go. Happiness is elusive. Something was wrong with what you had, Carvax. I don't know why. Oh, you only have one P in happiness. That's why. Happiness is winning. <laughs> All right, so now, now that we have the back end there, uh, we need the front end. So we're going to go to the client. Um, right now, we're just actually going to hard code the URL uh, because we got things to do. Well, we'll comment this line out. I'll just create a new variable that's equal to that. And now uh, we could run into an issue, though. We may not have cores on the back end, but um, we're going to build this. And then we're going to deploy it to, uh, we'll deploy it to Surge. Yeah, all right, so that creates the dist folder. We're going to deploy that dist folder with Surge. And we'll create the URL. Uh, nappiness, no, happiness. Happiness is. And it's not taken. Dope. Here it is. It worked. <laughs> we have 57 seconds left. <laughs> Happiness is bits donated to Coding Garden. Happiness is is good breakfast. Happiness is getting channel points. Oh, thank you, Mark Boots, who just jumped up from her couch to give me a standing ovation. You are a believer. You voted. You voted. Yeah, what's cool is we can see who voted uh, in favor of which. Um, but here, uh, check it out. Can this work without a database? Technically, yeah. yeah. Like You could create a page that you have to leave open, and then it's listening for Twitch chat. But if the page is not open, you don't see the messages. You could do it without a database. But the idea here is, uh, even when the stream goes down, all of these happiness is messages are in the database. So uh, they do show up. Happiness is you. Well, thank you. It's Devance. Is the timer regulation or what? I don't know. You can, you can go, you could rewind the stream and see that this took me 15 minutes. We did it. We did it. Happiness is modern JavaScript. Also, I don't believe our database has been hacked yet. <laughs> I mean, I didn't I didn't reveal the full password. The password is like three times as long as the characters that you saw. So I think it's going to be very unlikely that anybody actually... Uh, I mean, you could brute force it, but regardless. Happiness is small wins, says Carvax. Happiness is seeing yourself in this frame. Let's see what uh, Iron Man... Yeah. Look at that. Happiness is seeing yourself in this frame. Well, thank you, Mal, who says it looks really good. Yeah, and congrats to the believers. <laughs> Everybody that believed in me that I could do it in 15 minutes or less. I mean, uh, modern modern web and deployment is actually, I mean, it's fairly simple if you get everything right. There's just so many things that could go wrong. And uh, it just so happened that um, we did it. Yeah, I'll pay it out. So <laughs> for those of you that... Um, wow, 109,000 points in the pool. Um, how do I, how do I say who got what? Choose the outcome. Did I deploy it in under 15 minutes? Yes. Blue Hippie says they are so rich. <laughs> and so, yeah, so it was one in seven odds. So for the, for those of you that voted yes, I think you, you, you whatever you, or whatever you, uh, put up, it's multiplied by seven. And that's how many you get back. Yeah, happiness is and drop table, says a fallen hope. But we do have uh, SQL injection protection. Look at that. <laughs> Ched threw down 30,000 points. Wait, does that mean you have like 120,000 points now? Let me know, Ched. Do you have 120? I feel like I just paid my taxes. <laughs> um, happiness is forward slash quote. <laughs> happiness is on the screen. That's a nice little cat. Nice little cactus there. Cool. Yeah, but is is the site working for everyone? 
I'm actually curious. I want to go on my. I want to see how, what it looks like on my phone. It might not be readable. Yeah, it's working. Cool. Um. Cool. Yeah, I need to add like probably like a little bit of lazy loading. This is one of the better looking sites we've ever built, honestly. <laughs> like this looks really cool. Uh, and what's up, Larry? Thank you for the raid. Welcome, raiders. I, Larry, it's been so long since I've been able to tune into your stream. How the heck are you? And shout out to Larry. Um, yeah, what were you working on? Practicing binary search virtual contests. Interesting. Happiness is smile. Hey, friends. Uh, yeah, and, and welcome, Raiders. We actually just built this website. I mean, we, we built it over the past couple of streams, but we deployed it today, and it's working. But uh, basically, uh, this is listening to my Twitch chat, and you can say um, happiness is, and then uh, what, what you want your message uh, to be. And it will show up on this website. We have basically a gallery wall of happiness. And it's Vance. Thank you for the bits. Hold control and zoom in and out. It gets weird. Oh, I believe it. Well, oh no, you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just missed. Oh, experience with the 10 gifted. Are you kidding? Thank you, experience. Am I saying that right? Experience? <laughs> Does not work in IE6. Well, we're not going to fix that. Uh, yeah, so uh, I deployed it on Heroku and Surge. Happiness is watching this stream. Nice. Thank you, Larry. Happiness is 502 back <laughs> Yeah, so this is actually an example of kind of like bad interface design because even if you zoom in, like with Command Plus or Command Minus, it kind of stays the same size. But the reason I did that is because it's responsive based on width and height like this. You can see that like if I do this, then it actually responds fully. It's honestly not the best. And more bits from its Vance. It does some strange stuff. Yeah, yeah. Just don't zoom in. <laughs> Just don't zoom in. That's the answer to that. Um, okay, but let's see what Larry said. We probably need a way to to certain search search and filter these as well. Uh, happiness is watching the stream. Nice. Happiness is getting gifted subs. Yeah. <laughs> happiness is a warm gun, according to the Beatles. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll do one. Or um, we actually are near the. We're we're kind of at the end of the stream because I deployed it. It's Saturday. I'm gonna go get some lunch, hang out with my partner and my dog, have a and, and have a good day and all that good stuff. Um, but before I do that, let's just read these. We'll read the latest ones. So I'll, I'll give you ten seconds to submit one, because right now, uh, when the page loads, it is uh, it just loads all of the ones in the database. Right? We don't have any listener for for new messages. And uh, auto scroll is on the list. Also, like pagination, because right now it loads literally everything from the database whenever you load the page. Um, but uh, what we'll, we'll do eventually is like an infinite scroll. So, like once you get once you after the first five, it then makes another API request for the next ones. <laughs> you, you can you can say whatever you want but also you could try to come up with something that is really going to help someone else find their happiness if they're not feeling happy and they do go to this website so uh, really s look deep what do you think happiness like what is happiness to you what is happiness happiness is learning something new like coding i agree i am usually pretty happy when i'm learning um i guess it also depends on the topic and whether or not it's stressful yeah <laughs> All right, is everyone thinking of like a really good one to say because <laughs> the chat slowed down? <laughs> oh, uh, is, is, is the person whose birthday it was still here? Because I will sing you happy birthday before we go. Um, all right, I'm going to refresh the page. Now every happiness is... Okay, I'll do it one more because that's pretty funny. Okay, now every happiness is quote that has been said so far is on the page. And uh, any new ones won't show up here, but we're going to just do one last pass through just to get happy. Uh, it inserts a new one for every message you send. Uh, happiness is elusive. Happiness is getting raided. I agree. Thanks again for that raid, uh, Larry. Oh, it's uh, I'm Das Wolf. Yeah. Oh, no, no. I, I, will, I, will, I will sing you happy birthday. 
You, <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> Happiness is object object. Happiness is listening to Coding Garden sing happy birthday. I, I guess I'll just do it now. Let's do it now. Got a tune. Though it does seem pretty in tune. Happiness is happiness. Keep forgetting your name. That's Wolfie. I'll call you Wolfie. <clears throat> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Wolfie. Happy birthday to you. Happiness is cat jam. Oh, I totally forgot. We need to add emotes. Emote rendering. Yeah, happy birthday, Wolfie. Hopefully you have a wonderful birthday and a wonderful weekend. Yeah. <laughs> You're very welcome. Okay, we're going to read the rest of these and then we'll, we'll go raid somebody. Um, all right, next one. Happiness is losing all your channel points, <laughs> says J.S. Kenny. Uh, happiness is drop me. Yeah, and uh, for those of you that are that are just, just tuning in or, or anything like that, um, we do have the drop game here. We're going to end soon, but... Come back next time. If you do exclamation mark drop me in the chat, that drops your avatar. This is the drop game. Happiness is just a holiday they made up to sell goodie cards. Come on, Chad. That's really funny, but it's also um, kind of uh, dark, I guess. All right, let's keep going. Uh, happiness is an attempt at sequel injection. And uh, Sorali with the one-year resub. Thank you very much. That's a lot of support. Quite a few people are coming up on their on their one year, and it is awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, happiness is winning. Happiness is, hi, mom, I'm on TV, says angst. <laughs> happiness is learning something new, like coding. Happiness is more attempts at SQL injection, likely. Or they're just testing out the characters. Uh, happiness is semicolon drop table quotes. <laughs> Happiness is smiley face from our good friend Code Phobia. Shout out to Code Phobia if you're still here. Hey, you're very welcome, uh, Wolfie. Happy birthday. Uh, and Cabro HD, thank you for that five month resub. I honestly think we fixed the message, the resubs not showing up with that emote thing. Yeah. A Fallen Hope says I wanted to, yeah, I, I realize a lot of people are, we get that a lot on the stream, like, especially like this, this is a custom overlay that I wrote, right? And when we first created it, just so many people were trying to cross site script it. And it was fun. It's, it's fun <laughs> to try and break things. Um, but also it's, we, we're showing that it works. Okay. Happiness is a warm gun, according to the Beatles. Uh, happiness is undefined. Happiness is stepsister. Happiness is bits donated to Coding Garden. I thank you all for the bits, everybody that gave bits today. Uh, happiness is formatted in JSON, Kappa. Um, happiness is quote and drop tables, Kappa. Happiness is not to have teeth problems. That's true. You don't, like, like this is another one of those things, like when your teeth hurt, it's like the worst thing because it's your mouth, you know? It's like you gotta eat food and you, you, you talk. You use, we use our mouth a lot. Uh, and when you, when you have uh, tooth pro teeth problems, you, you remember like, ah, yeah. It's like, those are the, you, don't, you don't remember that it's so bad until it actually happens. Kind of like stubbing your toe, I don't know. But yes, let's all be glad that we, for, for all of us who don't, let's all be glad that we don't have any teeth problems right now. We take healthiness for granted, for sure. Um, happiness is a great afternoon watching Coding Garden. Happiness is easy deployment. I mean, yeah, it was pretty easy with Heroku and such. Um, yeah, recently got a root canal. I technically, I think from a professional dentist perspective, I need to get my wisdom teeth removed. 
Um, but I just haven't. And I kind of don't want to. I kind of feel like getting wisdom teeth removed is a bit of a scam. Like, shouldn't we keep our wisdom teeth? I don't know. I probably need to go. I probably need to go to the doctor. Um, but yeah, David is mentioning uh, that there is a public, to completely, totally public version of this chat manager. Wow. I don't know. Maybe uh, a side is saying it's a scam. I feel, but I feel like there have been a couple of times when the dentist has really, really tried to sell me on getting my wisdom teeth out. Like, and this was before they were even like they're they're starting to protrude. You can actually see them now. But my mouth feels fine. I don't know. I probably need to get them removed. But uh, quick aside, check out Dish Stream Chat, which is a completely open source chat overlay that if you're a streamer, you can use on your stream. And it looks very similar to mine, but um, this one is actually maintained and, wor and works for other users. So you should definitely check this out. Yeah, they're just trying to take my wisdom teeth out and steal all my wisdom. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, happiness is living stress-free. Um, happiness is wool. I guess that makes sense. Eventually, like if you, you have to be proactive. If you don't get your wisdom teeth out now, it could mean pain in the future. Happiness is meeting an awesome streamer that sings you happy birthday. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Happiness is feeling the sun on your face. Nice. Happiness is to not deal with CSS. We dealt with a lot of CSS today. And hello, Luca4. Welcome to the show. Uh, we dealt with a lot of CSS today, and it looks great, but it it took some work. Uh, but Katsamillion says, you don't want them to get bacteria all over them now that they are protruding because that will lead to health some problems. I guess that could make sense if you got, like, food stuck back there and stuff. And Cola Flask, thank you for that two-month resub. All right. We're about a third of the way. Let's keep going. Um, they wanted to take mine out 10 years ago. Never did. Never had any problems. Yeah, so I guess it, it varies by, from person to person. I think you do it proactively, but for some people, you may not have needed to get them out at all. Yeah, okay. I need to go to the dentist. I really do. <laughs> Happiness is a state of mind. Interesting. Happiness is leaving IE, IE behind forever. I can see it. You don't have to support older browser issues, but browser competition is a good thing. It means that we keep getting innovations. Uh, happiness is a big... B <laughs> come on, come on. I almost said it. Uh, happiness is small wins. Though, I mean, you know, if that makes you happy, that's great. The other thing that I didn't mention. Uh, happiness is stepsister. Uh, that, that's cute. You, you enjoy your stepsister. You enjoy hanging out with him. That's awesome. Uh, happiness is compiling code without getting an error. I agree. Happiness is testing happinesses. <laughs> Happiness is, uh, Sanipa spelled backwards. You're not wrong, experience. <laughs> this is the first time I saw that one. And thanks for those gifted subs earlier, too. Um, happiness is sandwich. I completely agree. Like, um, sandwiches are really easy to make, especially if you have all the ingredients at home. You know, bread, meat, cheese, condiments. And uh, I forget how easy they are to make, but also I forget how easy they are to make delicious, right? Because if you toast the bread, if you melt the cheese, if you heat up the, like, I usually heat up the, the like, the cold cuts on the stove, like, that, like, that takes your sand sandwich from here to here. And, uh, and it's great. And it's, you can make it at home and it doesn't cost that much money. Happiness is a sandwich. I agree. Uh, happiness is beer. Happiness is no hack database. And I haven't refreshed the page, but I don't think we've been hacked just yet. Uh, happiness is milk sponge. Happiness is seeing yourself in this frame. <laughs> nice. Uh, happiness is no hack database. Yep. Happiness is object object. I agree. Happiness is, insert quote here. Happiness is working. Happiness is a new line. <laughs> Happiness is a wonderful thing. I agree, Mark Boots. Um, happiness is lorem ipsum dolar sit amet concertator ade passing elite nula concertator rutrum ice mod. Great. Uh, <laughs> I realize it's lorem ipsum. I realize that. Okay, happiness is loving what you do. Happiness is melted cheese. Melted cheese on bread. Melted cheese on chips. Melted cheese on a burger. There's a lot of different things you can put melted cheese on, and it is great. Yeah. 
Happiness is getting a prediction right. Yeah. Congrats to all you people that believed in me, believed that I could deploy the thing in under, in under 15 minutes. Happiness is view. I agree. We use view today. I like I like the the uh, the positioning of the of the image because you see like the grass in the background and then the text just like floating. This is good. Happiness is being outside with friends. Yeah, it's kind of hard these days, but that is that does make me happy. Happiness is empty quotes. <laughs> Stop it! It's me. <laughs> That would be hilarious. I mean, because I'm kind of just like reading these, and if that one did pop up, no, we're not sponsored. Uh, happiness is undefined. Uh, happiness is less than three minutes. Not oh oh oh. You were telling me earlier that I only had three minutes until the deploy. Yeah. Happiness is knowing when you are sad. Yeah, we talked about this earlier. Like to be happy, you kind of have to know. Um, you, I mean, it, being sad, the absent, not necessarily the absence of sadness, but f experiencing sadness now makes you realize what it is to, to be happy because you realize that you're not experiencing those emotions. Um, yeah. So you can't really have one without the other. Yeah. No ups without downs, no downs without ups. Happiness is with two P's, right? Uh, some people were spelling it with one P earlier. I guess I could detect that because it's not a horrible typo. Happiness is attainable. I agree. I mean, for some people, it's more attainable than others because of like neurological issues. But um, I, th I think but the sentiment here is don't give up hope. You too can be happy, I think. <laughs> uh, and also, I'll just mention really quick, we can really see the, the drop shadow in action here. Well, that's awesome. Happiness is a good breakfast. Yes. Happiness is modern JavaScript. Happiness is awesome. All right, we're about two-thirds of, of the way through, and then we are going to going to end the stream and do a raid, but I'll just pause to say I appreciate you all. Thank you for all these quotes. Uh, happiness is that feeling that comes over you when you know life is good and you can't help but smile. Nice. Yeah, so we, we, uh, we used CSS. Uh, we did a whole lot of CSS today. We got this drop shadow working. We got the images showing inside the frames. We got the, uh, like the background of the, the gallery wall working today. Um, Last time, like we streamed on Monday and Tuesday, and we got uh, the back end set up with a, a database that's housing all of these Twitch messages and stuff like that. Yeah, today was a lot of CSS. Uh, happiness is winning points. Happiness is getting channel points. Happiness is code in production. I agree. I mean, and technically, we're in production. You too can go to this website right now. Um, it doesn't auto refresh. So basically, this is listening to my Twitch chat. Any message that starts with happiness is is put into a database and then will appear here, but it's not in real time. So if you refresh the page, you'll see the latest messages. Um, happiness is a well-baked potato. I agree. If, it, if a potato is underbaked, not that great. If it's overbaked, honestly, not that bad either. But well-baked, great. Happiness is on the screen. Happiness is happiness. Happiness is think long and hard on a problem and finding the solution. I agree. Is it going to work in future streams? Yeah, I mean, technically, as long as the, the back end is up and listening, it will. There are some awesome devs playing Among Us and streaming it. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll look at that. I'm not going to guarantee it, but we might raid them. We might. Okay. Happiness is making another people happy. Yeah, sharing happiness. Happiness is nappiness. This was a typo from earlier, but then people went with it. Um, here we go. Uh, happiness is insert quote here. Happiness is a good meal. Yeah. Happiness is having the time to do things that you actually love. Definitely. Happiness is type safe. That's relative, but um, <laughs> you're probably happier that you come across less bugs. Bugs. Uh, that quote comes from Code Phobia. Uh, happiness is when your team wins. Yeah. Happiness is drinking your mate from an actual mate. I should do that. I have a like a gourd upstairs, but I drink it from a can. Happiness is watching the stream. Well, thank you, Larry. Oh, you're right. We need to fix the title here. Put that on the list. Uh, happiness is 502 Bad Gateway. Happiness is biryani. Not sure what that is. Happiness is a lie. Eh. I mean, like, there's a... I'll say this. There is a, like a, what, what do you call it? Um, like a fake version of happiness. 
you know, the, the kind of happiness potentially pushed by corporations or movies, you know, I, that, that I'll say is a lie. Uh, biryani is a dish from Asia. From, is it Indian food? Well, that's dope. Cool. Yeah, but uh, that kind of happiness. I do believe happiness is a real thing. But it's not all sunshines and sunshine and rainbows like it is in the movies. We talked about it earlier. You can't really have happiness happiness without sadness. And uh, happiness is kind of everything, right? It's your full life experience. Um, the good times, the bad times, it's all everything together. It's from Iran. Okay, might have to try it. All right, let's keep going. Happiness is no pointer. Uh, happiness is not money. Send yours to me. <laughs> Send yours to me. Uh, happiness is stepsister. Nice. We've seen that one a couple times. Uh, happiness is a good idea. Happiness is chill and code. Yeah. Happiness is playing games and chilling with friends. I completely agree. I got to do that uh, this past week. I had some friends that came into town. Uh, happiness is not losing pets. Happiness is stargazing. Happiness is 500 internal server error. Happiness is lemonade on a hot day. Happiness is getting gifted subs. Happiness is a thing. Excuse me, I just burped. Happiness is seeing your girlfriend happy. Yeah, the, pe the people in your life, seeing them happy makes you happy, definitely. Happiness is view X, is the last one that will end on. So thank you all for your submissions. Um, our database hasn't been hacked yet, apparently. All the things still show up, so that's good. Uh, but if you go to this website, you will see any of the happiness quotes from the stream um, on the site, uh, paired with a random frame, a random font, and a random image. It's pretty fun. I'm pr I am very happy with what we have created. Um, my cheeks hurt from smiling from reading all of those, so reading this site has made me happy. Hopefully, it can help make you happy as well. If not, just like a tiny little pick-me-up. You know, you might be feeling down. Go to the website, see what some people have submitted. Um, so yeah, uh, we're gonna we're gonna go now. We're gonna raid. Oh no no, you're fine. A fallen hope. <laughs> you you did not ruin the project. Uh, I think it's it's to me it's it's comical, uh, and laughing makes me happy. So I, I'd say a good a good joke makes me happy. Yeah, all of the like the those and that one. Totally fine. I actually love the fact that these are here. <laughs> I'll say that. Um, all right. Yeah, we are going to raid. Uh, if you go to this site, you can see... Well, maybe not. I'll have to paste it in. Has Streamlabs not been working? Yeah, I think that's probably what we'll do eventually, Hacks, is like any entries older than a few days uh, like don't show up anymore. If you're not a sub, that's your raid message. Uh, if you are a sub, this is your raid message. Um, and we're going to go raid. Who are we going to raid? I don't know. Uh, maybe that Among Us dev thing. We'll check it out. Uh, but if not, wherever we go, show them lots of love. Drop a follow if you like what they're doing. I appreciate you all. Thank you for hanging out with me on this Saturday. Uh, thank you for all, for all of your input um, on the, the site that we built. Uh, happiness is dot surge dot sh um, all of this code is on github and it's completely open source it is here i'm going to push up the code i wrote today and um, if you have any suggestions feel free to open a pull request or uh, open an issue anything like that yeah we mentioned that early in, uh, earlier info you can info, you cannot zoom in or out um, yeah and have a great week weekend the art of missy um, shout out to everybody that subbed today uh, i appreciate you we got lots of new subs um, let's see. Yeah. It's Raz Dev, Denon Alive, Worsty, Art of Missy, Jesusette, and all the resubs as well, and all the bits, and all the gifts. Um, uh, if you uh, if you provided any sort of support to the stream, uh, your name will show up on the credits, including follows. Thank you for all the follows today. We got 60 follows. So, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.
Thank you.